Good evening, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger, and in just a few moments, Ralph Sampson, the three-time college basketball player of the year, continues his quest for that elusive national title as Virginia takes on Boston College in Ogden, Utah. Meanwhile, the traffic on the road to Albuquerque is thinning out just a bit. As we reported, Kentucky has advanced in the Mideast region, 64-59 over Indiana. And just seconds ago, it was Louisville over Arkansas with time running out. It was Scooter McRae who tapped in the winning hoop to make it 65-63. Arkansas led Louisville by 16 points in the first half of that game. But then with time running out, down to the last shot, and finally McRae battled his way back up. And you can see no time left. The field goal is in, and Louisville has advanced, and we finally get the matchup. Kentucky and Louisville for the championship of the Mideast region. One other game out west now. North Carolina State has rolled past Utah 75 to 56. And of course, we're going to bring you all the highlights from these earlier games at halftime of the Virginia Boston College game coming your way right after these messages from your local station. This is CBS. The Greater Richmond Antique Show this weekend, March 25th through 27th at the Richmond Arena. Rare items of all kinds on sale and a special display of fire antiques and a steam fire engine. When kids first heard about McDonald's great new kids cup for just 59 cents, their reaction was kind of what we expected. Well, cool. Wow. But what really got us excited was the grown-up's reaction. Far out. You see, you can bring the cup back again and again and get a free three-ounce Sunday sampler with a rich hot fudge topping. What? They're the bee's knees. <laughs> McDonald's new kids' cups. They're the talk of every generation. They're cool. We are neat. Groovy. Cats meow. Martin Chevrolet sells more Chevettes than any other dealer in central Virginia. That's why they sell them for less. And Martin Chevrolet has a huge selection for immediate delivery. With no cash down, Martin Chevrolet can put you in a Chevette for just $119.95 a month. Or if your trade-in is worth about $1,700, your payment will only be $79.95. Two ways to buy the best little economy car on the highway from Martin Chevrolet. The important difference. Martin Chevrolet, a quarter mile south of Lee Bridge on Route 1. Help keep America smooth and colorful. We're color -off. WTBR TV, Richmond, Virginia, Channel 6. One of the final 16 of the NCAA basketball championship tonight from Ogden, Utah, a West Regional semifinal matchup. The scene, the D Event Center, the game, Virginia's Cavaliers versus the Eagles of Boston College. No player in this championship is getting anywhere near the attention as Virginia's Ralph Sampson, player of the year for the third consecutive season. However, the singular quest for Sampson and Virginia has been that elusive national championship. But Sampson is not alone in that quest. Othell Wilson, the quick and strong playmaking guard, helped key Virginia's second round triumph over Washington State. Wilson is the chief spark plug in the Cavaliers running game. What Othell Wilson does for Virginia, Michael Adams accomplishes for Boston College. Adams is unquestionably one of the quickest guards in America. And his ability to go to the basket is one of the Eagles' trademarks in their fast break offense. But there's also Jay Murphy, a 6'11 forward, who can burn you with shots from the perimeter, as he did against Princeton in the second round. Coach of Boston College, Gary Williams, first year at BC, animated, involved, likes his team to be aggressive. For Virginia, Terry Holland, no coach has won more the last four years. Reserved, proper, unflappable, his team is mature and steady. In the final analysis, it comes down to this. Can Gary Williams find a way to contain Ralph Sampson, who looms large tonight? Sports presents NCAA Basketball, tonight's regional semifinal game, sponsored by Chevrolet, Chevrolet is USA 1, 
USA One is taking charge. Briggs & Stratton, the power in power equipment. And by Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. Utah live for a big Western Regional semifinal between Boston College and Virginia. And good evening, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. What a game we have for you. The Virginia Cavaliers and Ralph Sampson have won more games than any other team in the country the last four years. But until they win that elusive national championship, the critics will not be silenced. And the pressure just continues. All eyes are on Virginia. And they have a tough vote tonight. Boston College, like the Rocky Dangerfield, the team that gets no respect at all, despite the fact that Boston College, Virginia, and North Carolina are the only teams to reach the final 16 the last three years. They're a quick team, BC, well coached. They like to run. Should be an exciting game. Number one mission for BC. What about Ralph Sampson? How do you contain him, Bill? Well, Ralph Sampson, as everybody knows, Dick has been a dominating player, but they also know that teams do a lot of things to stop him individually. And when that happens, there are periods of drought where he doesn't even touch the ball for a while. For Virginia, key tonight is do something in the perimeter. Get Othell Wilson, get Miller, get Stokes to put up some shots that they can hit. And, of course, for BC, they're a team that creates 20 turnovers a ball game. That's a lot of turnovers. They're going to have to do that again tonight, and they're going to have to get consistent play from Murphy and fellas from the outside, big men that can play the perimeter game. Billy Packer, Murphy is a very consistent outside shooter, but the key for Boston College has to be the inside play of John Garrett. If he doesn't come up to snuff, BC could be in trouble. He's a key man. There he is, and we'll be back to meet the starting lineup here in Ogden, Utah, in just a moment. Five years ago, it was just an idea to create a new breed of copiers with the stamina to run and run and run that could anticipate the unexpected, adapt to changing conditions, and have the intelligence to constantly monitor itself. Introducing the Xerox 1075 and 1035, the first of the marathon copiers. From Xerox. Chevy trucks are taking charge with a new S10 Blazer. So advanced it was named 4x4 of the year. Taking charge with Instatrack. It lets you ship from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. S10 Blazer from America's truck sales leader. Come Chevy trucks are taking charge. Get 11.9% financing at participating Chevrolet dealers. Hurry. Offer expires March 31st. This bug's for everyone who's in the groove. It's five minutes on the upswing of five. Outside at 87 degrees under sunny blue skies. Stay tuned for my man Flash. I'm moving out of here having myself an ice cold brew. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For the starting lineups, let's join the public address announcer, Rob Alexander. Welcome to River State College and the DE Event Center for tonight's NCAA West Regional Semifinal Game between the Boston College Eagles and the University of Virginia Cavaliers. The starting lineups for tonight's game for Boston College at forward, number 33. A 6'8 junior from Dorchester, Massachusetts, Martin Clark. For Virginia, at forward, number four, a 6'8 sophomore from Princeton, West Virginia, Jim Miller. For Boston College, at forward, number 42, a 6'10 junior from Meriden, Connecticut, Jay Murphy. For Virginia, at forward number 10, a 6 eight senior from Montclair, New Jersey, Craig Robinson. For Boston College, at center number 55, a 6 eight senior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, John Garris. For Virginia, at center number 50, 7 4 senior from Harrisonburg, Virginia, Ralph Simpson. For Boston College at guard, number five, a 6'3 freshman from Washington, D.C., Dominic Presley. 
for Virginia Axar, number 11, six foot junior from Woodbridge, Virginia, Othell Wilson. For Boston College at guard, number 23, a 5'10 sophomore from Hartford, Connecticut, Michael Adams. For Virginia at guard, number 34, a 6'5 junior from Ogdensburg, New York, Rick Carlisle. And the coaches for Boston College, Gary Williams. And for Virginia, Terry Holland. The starting lineups and the coaches set to go. Virginia, Boston College back with the opening tip-off from D Event Center after this. We are USA One. Taking charge with tough, easy-to-own transportation like Chevy Chevette. While Ford's Space Escort suggested retail price went up, the lowest-priced Chevy Chevette held the line. In fact, this two-door Chevette is priced over $600 less than Escort L two-door. And Chevette has millions more owner-driven miles behind it. Chevy Chevette, from America's sales leader. USA One is taking charge. A new breed of sportswear. The Boston Athletic Club. Sportswear with spirit. The Boston Athletic Club. From shirts to shorts to slacks and back. From the cut to the colors, it's your style. It's the way you play the game. The Boston Athletic Club. Get into it. You're in for a game this weekend, one of the most unusual courses in the world sets the stage for the Tournament Players Championship here on CBS Sports. We're back live here in Ogden, Utah, capacity crowd, and the officials for tonight, Western Regional semi uh, semifinal. Don Rutledge of the Southeast Conference, Jim Bain of the Big Ten, and Mike Tanko of the Trans-American. Ralph Sampson, number 50 in white for Virginia. In the dark uniforms, they're maroon. John Garris, number 55, jumping for Boston College. And we're underway. Virginia controls the tip. Great man-to-man -man out here, Dick. Let's see how they... No, sir, they're back in his zone. One, two, two, and boxing way back inside. Jim Miller up top. And into the corner, Rick Harlyle misses the first shot, tipped out, and here comes Boston College, Michael Adams control. Adams loops it in. Not an alley Beautiful burning pass by Adams. Gary Hustlin all the way down the court. Adams, one of the things about him, it's almost impossible to take that ball away from him. He's so low to the ground. There's a foul immediately by Clark. But this is what Boston College wants to do. They want to put full court pressure on. Even if it doesn't cause turnovers, Billy, maybe it'll take its toll in the second half. Virginia's the kind of a team that's played well against people that want to up-tempo the ball, so it's going to be interesting this first uh, 10 minutes or so to see what that means. Martin Clark picked up the foul, so inbounding. Craig Robinson and now Othell Wilson, very strong guard, point guard. And here is Jimmy Miller from the corner hand. Well, Virginia's showing right away, as we said at the top of the show, they're going to have to put the ball up from the perimeter to take some of the slack away from Sampson, and they have done it the first two times down the court. Dominic Presley, mostly a defensive guard. Othell Wilson on Michael Adams, the big guard matchup. Wilson usually takes the toughest guy in the backcourt. Garris is fouled inside, and that's what D.C. learned in the NIT several years ago against Virginia, and that is try to go right at Ralph Sampson. And that's Gary Williams' plan. I think you're going to find, Dick, any time that you play against a great shot blocker, and I think whether it goes back to the days of Russell or Chamberlain, whoever it might be, the object is to take the ball to him. Don't try to go ahead and avoid him because that gives him the room to go ahead and get himself together for the shot blocking ability. Greg Robinson committed the foul. John Garris hits the first free throw. Steve Brody was to have worked this game with me, uh, but he is under the weather, and hopefully he'll be back Saturday for the Western Regional Championship. We're pleased to have Billy Packer with us. So here comes the full court pressure, and Garrett hits the free throws in Boston College lead 4-2. You can see that Virginia's trying to attack the pressure by throwing the ball right over the top of the front line of the defense. Now, if they can do that and do that well, you've got to remember, Sampson's down the other end of the court, matched up one-on-one -on, -one on his defender. There's that 1-2-2 zone defense packed way back inside. 
When they go to Samson and they're trying to deny him the ball, they will put two and maybe three men around him. Rick Carlisle misses, gets his own rebound at the baseline, goes inside to Robinson. Loose ball for the moment, and Carlisle hits inside. And here we are, two minutes into the game. Samson hasn't touched the ball yet, but Virginia's doing what they have to do tonight, and that's other fellas take that shot and take it willingly. A little more than a minute and a half gone by in this first half. Clark cover, Dominic Presley goes to the hoop and calls out. Tipping up and in, over and up. Sam Garrett, Don Garrett, who is certainly, uh, Garrett did not play that well against Princeton, and Gary Williams said he'll have to come alive if Boston College has any chance. We have a foul on Othell Wilson of Virginia. Othell tried to beat too many men on that break. I think he was one dribble away from being able to give the ball up, but a good play by Preston. Last year, Virginia lost to Alabama Birmingham in the regional semis at the Mideast. Othell Wilson was hurt, and that kind of upset Virginia last year. Well, it definitely took away a part of their game that they don't have at all if they have Othell out of there, and that is that penetrating guard that also has scoring potential. Two team fouls against the Cavaliers. Under 18 minutes remaining in the first half. The wall traveling called against John Garrett. So, a little anxious there, Dick, trying to get himself off track in a hurry. Top scoring teams, Boston College second and Virginia seventh. BC actually was the top scoring team before they had that slowdown game against Princeton. And one of the things, Virginia usually holds its opponents below 41%. Field goal shooting. Now watch the lob. Othell Wilson goes in. Samson is there. That's the problem with the press. If the press is beaten, you've got Samson down there to not only grab rebounds to put him back in, but also to get the lob. But BC probably won't take off the press just because of one play like that. Martin Clark, number 33 outside. Michael Adams against Wilson. Wilson has the strength on Adams. Adams may be just a shade quicker, but not that much. Murphy pushing up inside. Murphy banks it in. Good outside shot. Jay Murphy, 6'11", best outside shot on the team. Has come a long way from a skinny kid in suburban Connecticut in Boston College. Leading now 8-6. It's about 17 minutes, three minutes gone by in this first half. Carlisle looking for Sam, really sloughing off in there. You can see that everybody in Boston College has at least one foot in the paint. Therefore, yeah, good open shot from 16 to 18 feet. Miller from the corner misses, and the rebound by Murphy. Lead pass for Michael Adams. Samson, no foul over the top. Out of the crowd, banking in is Michael Adams, who is the third highest scorer, averaging 16 points a game. But Virginia's been beating the press so far. And here they come in with Carlisle getting an easy bucket. They're going over the top of the press so far, and we have a best game going on here. Both teams being able to penetrate against the other. Rick Carlisle, oldest player on Virginia, 23, transferred from Maine. He is a big, strong guard, good outside shot. They go into Murphy. They go right at Sampson. The rebound there was by Craig Robinson. I think Murphy feels that he can play the low post against Robinson. He's listed at six foot ten or so, but I'm sure he's a seven footer. Plays awful big. Murphy, as Robinson can't control inside. Presley was wide open to the left, and Adams in the crowd likes to penetrate. Back to another one. The little guy is coming alive. I don't think he liked that Princeton game very much. This is what he likes, the open floor. Well, he sure does beat any type of pressure. Well to eight, Boston College, their biggest lead. Virginia has yet to have the lead in this game. You can see now that Boston College brought it all the way back after that score. These kids look like they're a little bit tired to start off this ball game. Sampson, and he'll do it from the baseline, but Boston College probably feels they'd rather have Ralph out there than inside. Less than 15 and a half minutes remaining. In the first half, Dick Stockton and Billy Packer were an Aki Utah. They're trying to get it to Garrett, but fluffing off nicely is Carlisle. Double D Garrett. He'll have, to, he'll, have to put up, he'll have to put up some shots, Dick, because they are going to slough off. And here's that fast break. Two on one. It's Othell Wilson all the way, and Miller tips it up. Miller again fighting his Martin Clark. Loose ball. Adams will win it for BC. He's got a three on two, but Adams, but Sampson is one of the two. Beautiful fake by Preston. Used his body well. And Boston College in Virginia are playing end to end basketball here. And BC is leading 14 to 10. That was a four point turnaround. Virginia had a three on one break and couldn't capitalize. And Boston College came back and did it. Whatever happens, BC not intimidated defensively by Sampson, who misses that shot. Jay Murphy's lead pass to Presley. Back is Miller on defense. Carl is on. No, it is on Miller of Virginia. The foul is on Virginia. Let's watch Adams passing to Presley here. Adams is so quick on the inside. 
looks one way, passes the other. Beautiful job by Presley getting Sampson up. Does a nice little English job on the ball. Good play. I thought that last play was going to be a charge, but it wasn't called that way. It's a block on Miller, and it shows what quickness and speed can do. First foul on Miller, and that's the 13th foul against Virginia. 14-31 remaining in the first half. Boston College leading 14-10. And on the line, is the end of the game is Ricky Stokes, and he'll add quickness to the Cavaliers. I think what you see right here is Othell Wilson having to work the ball up against the pressure all the way. He's certainly tired a little bit, and Presley a 63% free throw shooter. There's Terrence Talley, a 6'4 forward, and a sophomore who's awfully quick and around the ball in there as well. And also in the ball game is Tim O'Shea, a point guard, number 15. So Gary Williams is going to his bench and going heavily early in this game. When you buy outdoor power equipment, a lot of what you buy is the power. That's why you will find a Briggs and Stratton engine on more makes and models of equipment than any other engine in the world. Put durable, dependable Briggs and Stratton power to work for you. Whatever brand of equipment you buy, make sure the engine carries our brand. Briggs and Stratton, the power in power equipment. We are USA One and proving it in Chevy Cavalier. Cavalier's new high compression two liter engine with electronic fuel injection gives you more power than the three leading imports. And even though Cavalier sedan is shorter outside than Honda Accord sedan, it gives you six cubic feet more passenger room inside, plus more room in the trunk. Chevy Cavalier from America's sales leader, USA One, is taking charge. Now get 11.9% financing at participating Chevrolet dealers. There's the Virginia bench, and Ralph Sampson is sitting down right now, and Kenton Edelin, a 6'7 junior, who tough defensive center inside is in the game. There you see him, number 30, along, we told you about Ricky Stokes and Boston College going with practically an entire new cast, and in fact, other than John Garris, it is a new cast. Roger McCready, number 20. Tally, we told you about, 24. Stu Primus, the sophomore guard, number 30, and Tim O'Shea, the point guard, along with Burnett Adams, the senior full. And the pressure is a little bit different. A 1-3-1, one, one, full court press. A lot of quickness in the game right now. The small team, they're trying to keep Virginia out on the perimeter. The foul is on Terrence Talley. That is his first personal foul. And that will be the second team foul on Boston College. Why are we seeing so many substitutes early in the game? Well, I, I think that we've got a tremendous pace in this ball game, and I think both coaches realize that nobody's going to go 40 minutes in this one. Therefore, they're going ahead and get as many people in the game as possible, and I think a, a smart move by Gary Williams and Samson's out there going with a smaller lineup. They stay with the zone defense into Edelin, and Edelin on the reverse can't make it, tipped out again to Rick Carlisle controlling. Frank Robinson, who's played his best ball in the second half of this year. Jimmy Miller, who was the best sixth man, according to Terry Holland, perhaps in the country. They go inside. Yeah. And over there. Frank Robinson, who is averaging under 10 points a game. Fifth leading scorer on the team, a good defensive player, but... Craig Robinson, senior from Montclair, New Jersey, and it's 15 to 12, Boston College in front. And it's off the hands of McCready, the freshman out of bounds, Virginia Ball. Well, Gary Wynn's going to have to take a certain amount of time here, let these fellas play, but then there could be a point in time when they get out of their offense, which they did right there. Sampson coming back into the ballgame. And of course, he made the substitutions with his team ahead by five. We'll watch the scoreboard when they made those changes. Stokes got away with a walk there. Very quick guard, junior from Richmond. And a fine defensive player. Miller is guarded by Talley now on the ship. Talley up on top. Miller dropping to the baseline. Blocked by Garrett. And a foul, not by Garrett, but another Boston College player. And Ralph Sampson comes back in the ball game. The personal foul on BC. So Sampson, who had 15 points and 12 rebounds, one of the all-time greats back in the ball game. Fouls on Stu Primus, uh, Dick, and, and uh, what you have now is that small ball club out there, and right away, Gary Williams is going back with his bigger lineup. He can't play with that small a team with Samson in the game. Wilson misses outside, and the rebound by Tim O'Shea, the little guard. No traveling call, and it's going to be an easy hit for us. Gary Williams wants to get somebody in the ball game. 
as fast as possible. Murphy and Adams wants he wants those two back in the ball game in a hurry. It's 15-14. Virginia has yet to have the lead and will have a Virginia foul meanwhile at the other end. It'll be the fourth team foul on the Cavaliers. And there's Michael Adams and Jay Murphy, both of whom got off to hot starts as Garrett goes out. And Garrett with six points, the high score for Boston College. Sampson has six for Virginia. There's Garrett, transfer from Michigan. Right, still a relatively small team in the ball game. Virginia has a big club in the game now. If they have Ken Needlin in there. They go inside to McCready, the freshman who's blocked by Sampson. And here comes Stokes. Foul by Stu Primus, his second personal foul. So Stokes showing the quickness that Virginia has when he comes off the bench. And Stokes will go to the basket. If you scout Virginia and he gets on the break, you know he's going to take it all the way. So you have to be prepared for that. Primus gets his second foul. Stokes will go on the line for two. So the team fouls four for Boston College. And three for Virginia. And on the line, Stokes shooting two. He ties the game and can give the Cavaliers their first lead with 12 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Although Ricky Stokes has not played that much ball, he's the third leading free throw shooter in numbers of tries. Shows you how aggressively he plays out and also how much he means to the delay game. All right, coming into the ball game now, interesting story. Tim Mullen, a miraculous comeback. He strained ligaments in the ACC semifinal against Georgia Tech. They thought he was through for the tournament and he's back to see some action. He was a starter all season. Michael Adams really throwing those good blind passes. Inside McCready, and there's a foul. One thing you have to say, BC is going after Sampson every time down the team. They're taking the ball inside there. There's Terry Holland. Can't believe the call, but it's Kent Needland, who's a very aggressive player defensively. 12-19 remaining in the first half. Edelin commits the foul, and here is Roger McCready. Played very well against Princeton. He's a freshman from Brooklyn, New York, and a very highly recruited performer for Boston College. Waiting in the wing for a starting role perhaps next year. It'll be tough to break into this lineup. They only lose with one man. Good rebound by Edelin. Doris tied at 16. Team fouls five for Virginia, four for Boston College. There's Sampson going up with a short one. And Sampson has eight. And that's one of the things Virginia did not do much of during the season. Is against the zone, just throw the ball up in the air. Let Sampson control it inside. And with a small team as BC has out there right now, Virginia's going to do that off. Nope. And Adams goes, knocks the ball away. He's a good defensive player, keep in mind. Now that Terrence Talley, Sampson, by the way, is four for five from the field off the top. And Aaron Pass and picked off by Othell Wilson. Here come the Cavaliers, trying to take a four-point lead. And Mullen, good outside shot, knocked away. And they're going to give the ball to Boston College. And here they're coming back with Gareth Presley and Martin Clark. And Virginia also coming back with Craig Robinson. Now, There's Martin Clark. Gary Williams is doing something that a lot of coaches don't have the confidence to do, and that's play people knowing that you're not going to be able to play a game with your first team all the way. He loves to use his bench. He's used them all year long. He got some playing time out of them, and he's still in the ball game, just down two. Martin Clark, very reliable player from Folksville, England. And missing outside is Murphy, but coming down with the rebound is three minutes. Presley, his baseline shot. Presley again, good fight. Sampson blocks the shot and a foul. Great one is against Virginia. It's going to be against Sampson, and that's great offensive rebounding by Boston College. First foul on Ralph, and the 16th foul on Virginia. Nobody blocked out on the inside the first time. Presley was able to get it back. He goes back in undaunted. There's Sampson getting the ball. Maybe he was a little bit too aggressive, realizing the clubs have out-rebounded him inside. So here's Dominic Presley on the line. He is not as good a free throw shooter as most of the other players of the top seven for Boston College. As he misses the first one. Mack and Hyde, ball player, and Johnny Dawkins played with him in high school, the great freshman guard from Duke, so there's some real quickness in that high school back there. One out of two out of four from the free throw line, and we have Virginia leading 18 to 17, a little more than 11 minutes to play in the first half. Dick Stockton, Billy Packer, Ogden, Utah. Winner of this game faces North Carolina State in the West Regional Final Saturday. Mullen outside, good left-handed shot. Garrett fighting, 
And it's B.C. Ball, but he's challenging Ralph. He's doing a good job blocking out, keeping Ralph on the perimeter. Mullen, who has not been in game action, there's a lot of difference between coming back and having yourself in some kind of condition to run, but not having been in game action, he hits, misses two uh, jumpers that are normally his shot. Michael Adams with that unorthodox <laughs> shot put, and Garrett is in for the rebound. Offensive Garris. rebounding again, Dick. Off to a tremendous start is John Garris. He's three for three from the field and has eight points to lead Boston College. His opposite number, Sampson, also has eight. Here's the half-court trap. Robinson low to Ralph. Ralph banks it. Ten points now for Sampson. And we go back to that business. We're going to press Virginia, and they throw over the top of your press and leave Sampson in a good position, one-on-one, -on -one, or at least not fronted by two men. Virginia leading 20 to 19. Mullen out to meet Martin Clark. Adam and Stokes paired up there right now at guard. And a good screen by Clark. Garris misses the shot. And Othell Wilson can go end to end. Very strong, likes to penetrate. And a uh, left handed shot. Great shot by Wilson. He had Garris there. Othell Wilson. And Virginia is up by three. That's their biggest lead. Under 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Clark. Presley doesn't want that jumper. Virginia's not playing it. In and out by Adams. And Sampson gives it to Wilson. People are very tired. Look at Robinson not even coming back down the court. Extremely tired by the pace of this game. Wilson. Perry Holland gets a great time out here, Dick, because his club got exhausted. But Virginia leads 24 to 19, their biggest lead. I'd like to keep that great GM feeling, Mr. Goodwrench, but how am I supposed to know when to do what? Just watch your 75s. 75? Here, to help you keep that great GM feeling, your GM maintenance schedule calls for a checkup every 7,500 miles. Looks complicated, Mr. Goodwrench. It isn't. All you have to do is watch the top of the charts and your odometer. We take care of the rest. Keep that great GM feeling. Mr. Goodwrench makes it easy. With genuine GM parts. This bud's for everyone who's got the heart and courage to go the distance. <laughs> yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This bud's for you. I'm Bill Bixby. Watch Marriott Hartley and me spar as two news anchors on Goodnight Beantown. Tell them when, Bill. It's premiering Sunday, April 3rd. Right after 60 minutes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. 9.40 remaining in the first half. Virginia 24, Boston College 19, and Ralph Sampson off to a big start. He has 10 points on that kind of shooting, four rebounds, but you pointed out that the thing to watch for Sampson is not the first half, but the second half. Well, I think, Nick, you're finding that a lot of people are tired of this ball game. The pace has just been very frantic. Ralph Sampson sitting down. I said that was a great timeout by Terry Allen because his clubs were exhausted. McCready with a fine shot from underneath and is fouled as well. Uh, now, did they count that basket? Yeah, the basket should count. Jimmy Miller got hit. Let's see if he's going to call it. Unless they call it on McCready. Yeah, they did call it on McCready. And it's going to be, uh, Miller was the one that got fouled. Yes, the the face. Yes, the basket is two. What you had is, is the violation that time of, of the plane. The How he was playing. Right. Right. He was coming down. The ball was in the air. And he hit, you know, hit Miller with his elbow. And the basket is good. So, BC down by three. There's the half-court track. Pretty good job by Virginia that time. Spreading out the defense. Trying to lob over again. Samson out of the ball game. Carlisle, number 34, Wilson, can't let him get free too much outside. Samson inside, trying to keep it alive, and it's Edel in the hands. Edel is pretty good inside player. Everyone talks about Ralph, but Edel in his name is present felt. He's an extremely good defensive player, good powerful leaper on the inside. There you see Garrison Edel, a good piece of officiating coming up here by Jim Bain, saying, hey, guys, just calm down a little bit. Get your position inside. Let me get this inbound pass going to straight. Right. Team fouls. Virginia has six. One more there in the penalty. Boston College has five. Miller with a baseline wow. shot. Edelin goes up with a pump and a score. Pretty good looking offensive move by Edelin. Edelin 
discovered as an intramural player and then went to junior varsity was a walk-on defensive player but showing his offensive prowess there Garrett gets a good position inside Martin Clark from the corner hits and Martin Clark who's shooting at 51 percent and averaging eight and a half points a game brings Boston College to within three he's a streak jump shooter can get it going in a hurry his stats are down offensively a little bit this year good trap on oh, oh good good play. Play. by Michael Adams and Adams goes in and beats me down by Wilson tried to break the trap by slips two defenders. Good job by BC. If Virginia's getting tired early, you know BC's not going to stop that pressure half court trap. And a foul against Miller is on Dominic Presley. And one of the things about BC that's kind of amazing, they've gone to the foul line this year 916 times. Their opponent's 737. And they're the ones that are the aggressive players. So uh, kind of an interesting contrast there. Samson back. Samson is back and also back Jay Murphy, number 42. For Boston College, he has scored just two points off the hands of Samson out of bounds, and it's still going to be Virginia ball. Again, showing you how high up in the air Samson could go. That lob came all the way from out of bounds. Each team with 16 fouls. Garrett with eight leads BC. Samson has 10 to lead Virginia. The two centers, the high scorers so far. Carlisle in the corner. 8.15 remaining in the first half. Tough to get the ball to Samson. You have Adams in the front, right underneath him. Garris behind. There he is. There's Samson with Garris there. And it drops through for out. Around the 12 points now and off to a tremendous start. He looks like a man possessed. Probably wants to erase all those goblins that have complained about Virginia not being able to go all the way. Garris is getting good position before on Samson, and it seems like he hasn't been, he's been getting it lately. Good block. Good block by Carlisle on Martin Clark. They bring it right out, and here's Jay Murphy hitting the outside shot, and he shoots it like a small forward. Dickey's got a great one-hand stab there. Everybody tries to play right in his face to make him put the ball on the floor, but he's so tall and so quick with that jumper. Second leading score at over 17 points, has four in this game. And Virginia leads with seven and a half minutes to play in the first half, 28 to 27. Sampson has hit his last four shots, by the way, and he's got now Presley and Murphy trying to sandwich him inside. Wherever he goes, he's got a man in front and a man behind, but he's still available up over the top. Othell Wilson over the top hits, and Wilson is hitting from up top and inside. He has six points and a very solid game for Othell. Looking at both of these teams, I think they're both accomplishing what they want as coaches in the ballgame. Sampson and Garrett really pushing inside. Carlisle kind of daring Dominic Presley to shoot, and there is the shot put shot by Adams. This isn't Sampson with another rebound, his fifth of the game. Here's Wilson. He's got Carlisle, and Miller takes it himself. Shot. Garrett the rebound, quickly out, two on one break. It's Adams behind the Presley, and he throws it away. And Colonel, he was looking at Ralph Sampson all the way down the court. Might not have been a bad idea to pull up a little bit. Now here you have Adams underneath him, down around his ankles. Now the ball goes into the top, and Sampson shoots that little patented turnaround jumper of his. One good thing about him, he can either turn clockwise or counterclockwise on that jumper. There is Ricky Stokes coming back in the game. The quick guard for Virginia, and Stu Primus, number 30, for Boston College. Stokes, number 15, so substitution at guard now, and so it's Wilson and Stokes, two quick guards. Primus adds a little strength and a little muscle. Craig Robinson with the jump shot. That's about Craig range right there to take that jumper. 12 to 13 feet. That's the shot that BC will give up. This shooting has improved the second half of this year. Once again, Virginia's open up a five-point lead. Matches their biggest of the ball game. Martin Clark misses. The rebound is by Robinson, and here comes Virginia. Could be their biggest lead of the game if they can score. Oh, good take. Wilson, one-handed, and banks it in. He is penetrating. BC's going to have to stop that. That was some fake, and Gary Williams is saying, I've had enough of this. I'm calling a time out to stop the mess. Exactly six minutes to go in the first half, and Virginia has opened up their biggest lead, seven points. We are Chevrolet. Why has Chevy Citation outsold all front-wheel drives over the last three years combined? You're looking at it. Hatchback versatility with 20 cubic feet of wagon-like convenience. Comfortable room for five people. An electronic fuel-injected standard engine with better mileage estimates than 41 smaller cars. You're looking at the versatile Chevy Citation. Seeing is believing. Chevrolet is taking charge. State Farm Agent Pam Johnson on life insurance. The key in life insurance 
is listening to the policyholder and trying to determine what that policyholder needs. Now, when a policyholder comes in this office, they don't know that they need whole life or term insurance, but they do know what they want to protect. And so it's my responsibility to sit there and let them talk and listen to them and then try to tailor our life insurance products to their needs. And like a good neighbor, Six minutes remaining in the half. Gary Williams, Boston College team down by seven. And we've had a lot of substituting, but with six minutes to go, what should we see? Well, I think what we're going to see from Gary Williams is to try to get back with his starting lineup somewhere around the five to four minute mark. You try to finish up strong in a given half. Now, in substituting, which is one of the things that he's done so well throughout the course of the year, you do run into that problem, Dick, where you get lineups in the game that don't match up too well with the other ball clubs. And that's what's happened to BC on this little stretch. Burnett Adams, number 44, the seniors back in the game. Murphy double pumps and goes right and scores over Sampson. So Jay Murphy now has six points. He can do it inside as well as outside. 34 to 29. Miller at the baseline. All of a sudden, they go back into their zone again. You notice how easily BC is getting the ball with the bounce pass. Old Dr. Tom Davis bounce pass is inside against Virginia. You can't let a man that big get it that easily. Sampson triple team. They go out to Wilson, daring Virginia to beat him from outside. Jimmy Miller will challenge him and hit. Virginia really doing the job, putting up the perimeter jumper. That's what they did not do against Washington State. That shot is always available when you've got a guy like Sam. Well, the big matchup, Louisville and Kentucky, is going to be a reality now as Jay Murphy gets the basket goaltending called against Virginia, against Sampson. But the score that you saw there was Louisville 65, Arkansas 63, come from behind victory. And now they'll face Kentucky, who beat Indiana 64-59 in the Mideast Regional in Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, you had Lynette Adams caught down there with Sampson. The lot was available. Virginia liking to slow this tempo down a little bit. They've got that zone packed in, and there's Ralph again. Sampson in the lane. Almost a goaltending call. Adams got his hand out of there in a hurry. Boston College can come within three points here. Might have been a walk. But none call. Adams, what a pass to Murphy inside and a foul on Sampson, his second. And coming back in, Terrence Talley, number 24, Dominic Presley, five for BC. Once again, Virginia not doing the job at all against penetrating. Now, if you can get the ball inside like this, watch Michael Adams. Stop. I think he was walking on the play, but got by with it. And once again, BC's inside. There is no way that anybody can stop a, a Murphy who gets the ball two feet from the bat. Virginia's 17th foul, and Murphy misses the free throw. He normally shoots 75% from there. Very quiet on the surface, but he's fiery underneath. And he's been with the Eagles all three years. They've been to the final 16 in the NCAA. One of two, and it's 36-32 Virginia. 4.43 remaining in the first half. And Bernard Adams, who's uh, down there guarding against Sampson right now, has been in a postseason playoff all four years of his career. Only guy in BC history to do that. You know, Billy, Virginia has scored every time they've had an offensive rebound. Good block. I thought he was on the ball. That was a pretty good looking block. Burnett Adams called for the foul. I haven't gotten one right yet, Dick. I thought he was on it. But the point now, BC has had three offensive rebounds for five, but Virginia has five offensive rebounds for 10 points. So BC's going to have to stop that second shot. One of the big improvements in Ralph Sampson this year, and he always works to improve his total game, is he's up his free throw shooting percentage about 10 percentage points. Ralph Sampson. Who has a sense of history in his career in Virginia. He knows that that Ewing matchup with Georgetown will be remembered despite how many times they meet, meet in the future. Ralph, a very aware kind of player, and they're going to call a foul. Foul on Robinson, coming over the back. So Craig Robinson with his second personal foul. We were talking about Louisville and Kentucky in that big battle coming up on Saturday, and that'll be the first time that those rivals from the state of Kentucky who never played during the regular season will have met since 1959. And people in the state of Kentucky, Billy Reed, the journalist in the Louisville Crown, he's been writing about that for what seems like a hundred years. He finally gets his wish. Brent will have halftime highlights of both of those games. There it is, Terrence Talley fighting on the mip after the missed free throw. And Talley comes up. He's a sophomore. Primus is a sophomore. McCready, a freshman. And Gary Williams not afraid to go to his bench. And a 37-34 Virginia with 4-12 to go in the first half. So, giving me a shot. Instead, they go to Robinson. This is from the corner, and there's another foul on Edelin. 
I'm really surprised with four minutes to go here that Virginia doesn't go back to their regular starting lineup. They've got themselves a working margin. They're trying to keep people rested, but you got the 15-minute rest at halftime. Or for that matter, Boston College. Well, I thought that they'd come back with, they have nobody in real foul trouble. Edlin now picks up his second. Protégé of Lefty Drizel, Terry Holland played for him at Davidson, coached at Davidson, and of course has been at Virginia nine years, has an 833 percentage the last four years with 111 wins. No coach has more victories in that time. Right now, Garris has nine points, five rebounds, and has really come alive the way Gary Williams hoped he would, at least to this point. Nick, you mentioned Lefty Giselle. He's having a pretty good NCAA tournament. He got in. Perry got in. Another assistant, George Ravling, got in, a former assistant. And of course, uh, in the case of Gary Williams, he was an assistant coach uh, at the University of Iowa. One point lead. Virginia was up by seven. It's been cut to one right now. They go out to Wilson. And that zone is back in there. Very active right now. One, two, two zone. Packed inside 15 feet. Edelin can't get near the ball. And Jimmy Miller from the corner throws up an air ball into the hands of Burnett Adams. Very bad shot selected by Virginia. Taking corner shots. Nobody in there to do any rebound. Remus in the lane. And fighting is Garris. It'll be Boston College ball with Presley number five. 324. You watch the clock to go in the first half. Nick Stockton, Billy Packer. Fast pace action here in this first half. Burnett Adams can't do it on the turnaround. Here comes Virginia back. But so is BC on defense. Othell Wilson pulled out. Edelin saves it. Wilson, he is unconscious, oh, no, no. he won't quit, he won't quit, he got fouled on that play. Boston College ball, we have exactly three minutes to play in a one-point game. Rick Carlisle comes back for Virginia, Michael Adams and Jay Murphy are back in for BC as Stokes goes to the bench. Uh, what you might be figuring here for Terry Holland with three minutes to go, maybe he's wanting to keep Ralph Sampson on that bench not to get in any further foul trouble. BC, the fourth seeded team in the West region. Virginia, top seeded in their region for the third consecutive year. And Terrence Pally goes to the hoop. What a quick this and what strength he has going in. And from seven down to one up comes BC. Sampson sitting on the bench. We've had four lead changes in this game and four ties. Boston College in front. The question is, will Virginia get tired? That's something to look for as we go into the second half. Sampson's coming back. Somebody from Virginia is going to have to show that they can make the perimeter shot here because with Eden in the game, they really don't have a lot underneath. Jimmy Miller is deflected and blocked by Presley, and it's still Virginia ball as coming back in the ball game. as you look at the offensive rebounding story, is Ralph Sampson, who leads all scorers with 13 points. Well, here you have BC that's out-rebounded their opponents by three a game. Virginia, on the other hand, out-rebounds their opponents by eight, so I have to be surprised that BC's attacking the boards as well. Off their hands of Sampson, Boston College ball. You talk about Virginia's edge. They're the number one team in the country in rebounding margin. But here comes Boston College with a one-point lead in the ball, 2.15 to go in the first half. Adams, 23. Martin Clark, 33. Presley looking to go inside again. And they're going to call a foul on Jimmy Miller, and BC can open it up for Miller, his second personal. And they put a man on the line that can really shoot those free throws. I want to remind you at the conclusion of tonight's game, Billy Packer and I will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. So Miller goes to the bench with two fouls, and coming in is Tim Mullen, the outside shot. And here is Martin Clark. Boston College is 8 of 13 from the free throw line. Virginia's been in the line four times and made three. Well, I think the reason for that is that Boston College has been much more aggressive on that end of the court. Really going after the rebounds well. Here you can see Martin Clark, an 86% free throw shooter. It's nice to have a big guy that can hit him that well. And you can hear it all the way to the last row. Virginia's been quite a drought here. They had a seven-point lead. Now they're down three. Boston College earlier had a five-point lead. Missing Robinson in the rebound is by John Garrett. Boston College is up by three. That's a ten-point turnaround for them. Little shy. Murphy gets his own. Foul by Craig Robinson. Oh, no, they're going to call it the other way. It's on Boston College. I don't think that was a good call at all. That looked like a foul on Robinson. They call it on Murphy, and that's his first. I agree with you. You had Murphy getting the ball off nice and clean. He grabs the rebound. Robinson bangs into him. Very bad call. And Gary Williams 
is over there trying to plead his case with the official. First foul on Jay Murphy and going to the line to shoot one and one is Craig Robinson. Well, Dick, uh, I, I think that uh, Gary is right on that one. <laughs> and he is incensed. Gary Williams done a tremendous job. He was an assistant under Tom Davis. Lafayette for six years, BC for one, and oh, it will go as a basket. And they're going to credit the basket to Ralph Sampson. That was a break for Virginia. Sampson got a piece, but Murphy had a piece, a bigger piece, just happened to go in the basket. 135 remaining first half. Boston College leading by one. Winner of this game faces North Carolina State in the Western Regional Final. And Garrett's going up over the quick. Garrett is taking it right to Ralph Sampson. He's so quick with that first step. And even though Ralph has got a lot of size on it, he can't get to it. Carlisle comes right back with a bank shot. Keep in mind what we said at the top, that Garrett has to have a good game for Boston College to really challenge Virginia. And Garrett so far has 12 points and 7 rebounds. Sampson, 15 points and 6 rebounds. So he's playing even with him. BC is going inside. I think Garrett will be picking up confidence inside. There he goes again. Picks up another one. And if that's on Ralph, that'll be his third. And it is Rayon Sampson. Garrett will go to the line. He better come out of there now. He's got to come out right now. He will. Edel is coming in. What's happening is that Samson's playing behind Garrett and making it so easy. Kind of a touch play right there, but a good job by Garrett. Watch him taking it right to Samson. There is Ralph on the bench with three fouls, and that becomes a story to watch. And on the line is John Garris, who is a transfer from the University of Michigan. He didn't fit in, wanted to come back to New England. He's from Bridgeport to prove that they were wrong at Michigan. And so he has something to prove. He started to emerge last year during the playoffs. Amazing, Dick, that you get two outstanding Big East players this year, Garris and Leo Rappin from Syracuse, both transfers from Big Ten schools. Leo from Minnesota, of course. Austin College by three, less than a minute to go. And BC is either full court press or trapped half court. Good time to go ahead and look for the last shot, and BC realizing that a little half court trap of their own. Mullen, the outside shot, number 45. He's a left-hander, Wilson, and Martin Clark is the point man in the 1-2-2 two, two zone. Great Wilson penetrating, Great and is yeah. from BC. And the Boston College bench is up in arms again. It's on Burnett Adams. Well, I, I'm having a hard time watching this game from an appreciating standpoint because I think every other one's going the other way. Well, you are wearing a striped shirt. Well, I know. Seemed like they had pretty good position that time. So Othell Wilson will go to the line. 74% from the free throw line. One of the things about Othell is he's got such a powerful body. And when he makes that crossover dribble and he's low, it's very difficult defensively to stay with it. Awfully strong. He makes the free throws, and it's 44 to 43 now. BC leads, and Ricky Stokes, the up-tempo guard, comes in off the bench, and Carlisle goes out, so Virginia will be quick the last 35 seconds. And now they put their pressure in. Go full-court pressure. you got 34 seconds to go. Now, what's tough about this? You turn Michael Adams loose against full-court pressure. He's liable to hit somebody wide open for the pass. Now watch him. Here he comes. Up Adams. Good job by Virginia, but there he goes. Adams breaks the press. 29 seconds to go, and in the crowd, Adams fires it up. Loose ball and a foul. BC's Martin Clark is all over Mullen, and so Mullen will have a chance to put Virginia in front with 24 seconds to play in the half. Adams is so tough in the open court area. He had what he wanted, but he couldn't make the pass and had to pull up for the shot. Good job by Virginia getting back. 45 white. Jim Mullen has started every game in his career until he was injured against Georgia Tech in the Atlantic Coast Conference semifinal game, and he is the best free throw shooter on the team, as you see, over 88%. Boston College is going to bring Murphy in, so they want to make sure that they can get something offensively down the other end of the court. There's the knee that he hurt in the Georgia Tech game. I thought he had been operated on, but he hadn't. It was just strained ligaments, and he's back a lot quicker. And, of course, in the first game tonight, Dick, he had Derek Wittenberg, who everybody thought was out for the year, and he just burned it up for NC State tonight as they hit something like 16 for 19 in that ball game. You saw number 51, Dan Merrifield, the sophomore forward, who the guy that kind of makes things happen, and he's inserted with 24 seconds to play in the half. Boston College trailing Virginia 45-44. Stokes on Adams, quite a matchup back here. Adams brings it across against Stokes, who's awfully quick. They're setting up their shot. 14 seconds, you watch the clock. Look for Murphy, look for Murphy to try to get something here. 
Penetrating is Adam on the rebound by Edelin, and there's the pass with two seconds. Intercepted, and this no shot is no good, and that'll do it for the half. Ralph Sampson, 15 points and three personal fouls. John Garris had 14 points, challenging Sampson at every turn. How do you look at it with Virginia leading by one? Well, basically, you play the first half to get to the second, and it looks like, like both coaches got what they want out of that first half. Very close ball game, high tempo. Quite a basketball game in our hands. All right, at the end of the first half, it's Virginia 45, Boston College 44, and an exciting game here at Ogden, Utah. Right now, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? All right, Dick, and you know, coming up on Saturday afternoon, the first meeting in 24 years between Kentucky and Louisville. We'll show you how those two teams got to the Mideast Regional Final after these messages from your local station. Sunday on CBS Sports. Great college action with the Women's NCAA Basketball Championship. Plus, swimming and diving, track and field, all here on CBS Sports. This is CBS. At Southern States, we've got more than quality seed and fertilizer. We've got mowers, tillers, and tractors, too. Come and see our dependable turf trim lawnmowers, including self-propelled and riding mowers. And great gardens start with our Southern States Rotary Garden Tiller. Or get a do-it-all Southern States garden tractor. All of your lawn and garden needs are at your Southern States store or dealer now. Now there are four Richmond area Southern States producer service stores to serve you. Drop everything and do it. But McGeorge Toyota has your kind of deal at your kind of price. Drop everything. See McGeorge Toyota 7705 West Broad. We had two spectacular basketball games in the Mideast Regional tonight in Knoxville, Tennessee. Joe B. Hall and Kentucky taking on Indiana and Bobby Knight in the first one, and Joe B. Hall prevailed against Bobby. Here are the reasons why. Dirk Menefield was hot for the Wildcats. He finished with 11 points. Randy Whitman kept Indiana in the game early, but he dictated Joe B. Hall's changes in the defense from a zone and back to a tough man-man. Here's a great alley who play to the center, Mel Turpin of Kentucky. He's getting better and better for Joe B. Now watch here, Kenny Walker, the Wildcat freshman. Remember that name. He just keeps getting better and better. Uwe Blop also came on for Coach Knight down the stretch for Indiana, but then the smartest play of the game. Watch here, Jim Master will go behind his man on the line. Now, Uwe Blop, who's down low for Indiana, Kentucky leading by three at the time. And if Indiana can snap it down, they can pull it within a point. And Master jumps up, pulls down the missed free throw, and then Kentucky goes on to win it and advances to the Mideast Regional Final. 64 to 59 was the final score. Then it appeared that Kentucky had done their job, but Louisville was going to be upset by Arkansas and their splendid coach, Eddie Sutton. But in the end, Denny Crum and the Cardinals prevailed. Watch here, Charles Jones for the slam, and it was all tied at six. So watch Daryl Walker for the Razorbacks. Go the length of the floor for the layup. It was that backcourt quickness that kept Arkansas in it. And Eddie Sutton's team slowly moved ahead by 16 points in the first half and watch their big center Joe Klein just jam away inside but then with four minutes to go Scooter McRae with a great block on Alvin Robertson and suddenly the Cardinals were back in it for Coach Crum less than 10 seconds to go in the game and here's the winner it's tied it'll be tapped in by Scooter McRae and also Charles Jones gets a piece of the ball and Louisville has won it what a marvelous ending 65-63 and now Saturday on CBS at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Folks, the whole state of Kentucky will be tuned in on this one. Why the governor, John Y. Brown will be there. Phyllis George will be there. Paul Horning, everybody else in that state. And we'll come back here on CBS and tell you more about the tournament, including the first game in the Western region in just a moment. The person who goes to work may not have far to go. But at the Hat of the Month Club, the boss better keep moving. To keep the books, organize the files, write the letters, 
check out the inventory, find time to create, and still keep on top of things. Yet even a thriving business can reach a point of diminishing returns. A good time to learn about the IBM personal computer. With this tool for modern times, a person can quickly master such jobs as accounting or word processing. Even use the IBM personal computer to forecast growth. All helping the business person at home to wear many hats. While selling even more. And that can be a feather in anyone's cap. The IBM personal computer. Try one on at a store near you. Higher Education Today. The NCAA is proud to present this special tour of our nation's colleges and universities. Every year, high school seniors ask, should I go to college or not? Only the individual asking this question can decide what is best for his or her future. College is not for everyone, but more and more careers seem to require at least a bachelor's degree. A college education is an important key to challenging opportunities in diversified fields. It can provide a lifetime of satisfaction. Higher education today. Challenging. Motivating the mind. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. The cardiac kids of North Carolina State prevailed over Cinderella from Utah tonight, 75 to 56. The Wolfpack blazed away at 79% in the second half of this game for Jim Valvano. Watch Case Mannion. Here are the Utes in the early going. The game was tied at 12, and it did not look like it was going to be a blowout. Derek Wittenberg played splendidly for North Carolina State, and look who was at the first game, doing a little scouting, Ralph Sampson. Now watch North Carolina State's Thurl Bailey intimidate here with a block shot. Now North Carolina State moves up by eight on this Wittenberg field goal, and they were simply never headed. Bailey blocked another one, and then at the other end, Low got it going, and it was 66-48, and afterwards Jerry Pim, well, he just congratulated Jim Valvano on a great job of coaching. I think the key to the game tonight was our defense in the second half. I really thought we did an outstanding job defensively against the club that's been playing pretty good. I think that enabled us to break it open a little bit. Now, of course, we are at halftime here, the winner to play North Carolina State. If it is Virginia, a rematch of the ACC tournament final, but Boston College is doing some job tonight. And one of the reasons why, Michael Adams. Dishing off, inside of Ralph, and when Ralph came back down, Boston College converted. But now watch Sampson, 15 points in the first half, but I think the key stat, not his scoring, but the fact that he is playing with three personal fouls. And we'll continue here on CBS in just a moment. Right now, the one thing you want most is an opportunity. door hatchback imported for Dodge and Plymouth. But we're not quite finished with it yet. All five doors, room for five, front wheel drive, high mileage of course. But you just can't know that this five door Colt is lower priced than any four or five door Japanese import until you see the $55.99 base sticker price. And you can get it with 11.9 financing or $300 cash back. Now we're finished. Colt imported only for Dodge and Plymouth. You know, repairs cost so much, it's terrific you're trying to be handy. What do you mean, trying? Peer Peerless makes it easy to be handy. I'm going to hook up this do-it-yourself Peerless faucet, and these are the only tools I'm going to use. Watch. Just insert the flexible copper tubing and turn the special tightener by hand. Bend the tubing by hand. Then snap the quick connectors by hand. No tools, and it's finished in a snap. Water! And making it easy to be handy, Peerless is Peerless. 
Like a lot of people, I'm taking better care of my body. Better care of my skin, too. With Skin Bracer Aftershave. Shaving is rough, so I use Skin Bracer. It cools and smooths skin. Tightens pores. That's the tingle. Smells great, too. But Skin Bracer is not cologne. It's skin care that feels good. That's why more men are saying, thanks. I needed that. Skin Bracer, now in spice, too. Takes care of men who take care of their skin. Skin Bracer Aftershave. Bye, men. Ticket orders for the 1984 NCAA Basketball Championship in Seattle's Kingdom must be postmarked April 5, 1983 with the official order form. Ticket prices vary and include admission to the semifinals and finals March 31st and April 2nd. Obtain a copy of the order form by writing 1984 NCAA Basketball Championship, The Kingdom, 201 King Street, Seattle, Washington, 98104. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. We've got a good one brewing for you tonight, and I think we've got another good one tomorrow night. We'll be from the Midwest region. We're going to bring you number one ranked Houston against Memphis State and Keith Lee. We'll also have highlights of the first game in that region, Villanova against Iowa. The Hawkeyes are improving, and of course, over in the east tomorrow, those two finals up in the Carrier Dome, St. John's against what I think is an underrated Georgia team, Ohio State and the defending national champion, North Carolina Tar Heels. All those highlights tomorrow, and of course, our live action. And we'll continue tonight on CBS in just a moment. This is one economy truck that comes with a five-speed and radio tire standard. It's Mazda's B2000 Sundowner. The only economy truck that comes not only with a five-speed and steel-belted radio, but tinted glass and full carpeting, all standard. And at $57.95, it's also the lowest price truck in America with all that standard equipment. Coming up. Excuse me. My mother oh. sure looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Mighty tasty, Slim. Well, where's the trip, Colorado? We come a thousand miles for this here Stroh's bear. Not surprising. Happens every day. Yeah? Excuse me. I say, old chap, a cold bottle of Stroh's, please. <laughs> I like you. Look what we do. and Adam wanted from spring break was a good time. Nelson, wherever you look, skin, skin, skin. What they got was an adventure. They got trouble. They got kidnapped. A real fair, real fair. Two against one, right? I'm wearing a towel. But eventually, they got just what they wanted. I still don't know where my underpants are. Why, what happened to them? I think they ate them. Spring break, rated R. Fox Friday at a theater near you. Back here at Ogden, Utah, Virginia leading Boston College at the half, 45 to 44. Look at the scoring for Virginia. Ralph Sampson off to a fine start, but that's only part of the Sampson story. Rest of the Virginia team taking their outside shots, which they didn't do against Washington State, something Holland wanted them to do. Garris having an outstanding game, and so on down the line. Garris, Murphy, and Adams set the pace for Boston College. But the big question about Sampson, not so much as 15 points, but as three personal fouls at the half, Billy. I think what we're going to see, Dick, is Virginia going to almost have to go to zone. They can't afford to start their second half man-to-man because -man, Garris is not undaunted. He's taking that ball right at Ralph Sampson. He's really quick. He's got the size to put it in in the shot selection. So I think Terry Allen's going to have to pr protect the Sampson in the zone. Have you seen many players of Garris's size or whatever going against Sampson and challenging him so much? Well, I, I think that BC gets the ball down to him low. He sits, he gets good position down low, and with that quickness and size, Ralph Sampson can't just stay away from him and bat the ball away. What about this crazy quilt substitution we're seeing in this game? When is it going to end, and how do you look at it? Well, I think it's been a tough game to announce because they, they put in so many different people, both teams, and, and there really has been no flow, no consistent flow. I think the coaches are going to stay with the substitutions, but then I think there's going to come a point 
where one of the coaches said, hey, we're going to gut it out with our best people. That may be five, six minutes to go in this ballgame if they're still tight. How about the shot chart now? Well, one of the things interesting right here, not much happening up at the top of the key. Everything down around the baseline. BC, this is Virginia right here on this end. You can see where Sampson's been operating down on the baseline, taking a lot of shots from the wing. Now, here down on the other end of the court, you see Boston College right around the hoop. What's impressed me is the way they have gone to the offensive board. Time and time again, they've gotten two and three shots. But we have a 45-44 game. Dick Stockton and Billy Packer will be back. CBS coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. It's Palmer and Sarazen and Nicholas and Hogan, a tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. This is CBS. Time is running out, so drop everything. And hurry on down to Toyota's Drop Everything sales event. Wherever you see this sign, Toyota dealers are trying to sell 14,000 trucks, but they're going fast, because they really do want a deal. So drop everything. And come on down. Trucks are at 82 sticker prices, and there are special incentives from Toyota to dealers that could save you big money. It's Toyota's big drop everything sales event, so drop everything and come on down. Oops! Our business vehicle insurance helps you keep on trucking. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide. Tonight's NCAA regional semifinal game, sponsored by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. All state for home, auto, business, health, and life. You're in good hands with All state. And by Xerox. Advancing office productivity worldwide. We're back here at the D Event Center where Virginia and Boston College, along with Carolina, the three teams and the only three teams in the last three years to make the final Sweet 16 of the NCAA championship. Boston College, Garris misses the first shot, but BC controls with Dominic Presley. And you can see that Virginia has gone to the zone. A 1-3-1 one, one with Sampson in the middle. Garris still has a chance to get the ball and attack him at that spot. They go to Murphy, out to Michael Adams, who goes into Garris with a good pass. And, a oh, foul, and Sampson has picked up his fourth foul. And that's a big story here. Number four on Ralph Sampson. Now, Terry Allen has got to take him out at this point. And Adams made a superb pass, looked like he was going to shoot, and got it right into Garris. In the in the one three one zone, the way that BC is attacked, they went right on into Ralph Sampson. There was a call with the body. He's going to sit down, and now his teammates are going to be called upon to carry his ball club. Look at Ralph Sampson, very disgusting. And Kendon Edelin is into the ball game now, number 30 for Ralph Sampson, and Garris is on the line. And John Garris, who had to play the game of his life against one of the greats of all time in college basketball, has met that challenge to this point. Garris, 7 for 7 at the line, has 15 points. And you can be sure, Dick, if you're Terry Holland, you've got to see how long your club can stay in the game without Sampson in. There's the first interception off the inbound. The pressure, Michael Adams with his shot put, shot misses, and Garris keeps it alive. Out to Adams. Once again, great offensive rebounding by Boston College. Virginia staying in the zone. Martin Clark in the baseline, double team Murphy and Miller. Miller on line, and here comes Dominic Presley. And off the top this time, Clark. Let's Craig Robinson handle it with no foul, and here comes Virginia with Wilson. Wilson has had a big role in the first half, and of course it'll be now up to some of the people like Robinson and Miller, who's hit from the corner. Jimmy Miller is a fellow in Stanford, did not play against Houston. That went absolutely crazy, and Jimmy Miller is the kind of guy that has that type of offensive ability. Most highly recruited next to Ralph Sampson in Virginia's Miller, into Garris, and Garris scores again, and now they're really going to go to it. They really are, and they're getting the ball right down the heart of the zone. And again, now when you throw the ball over the top of that press, Dick, there's no scoring threat down on the other end of the court because Elon and Robinson don't have that presence that Sampson has there. You can see the air for the moment come out of that Virginia balloon. They have plenty of time to recapture it, but Boston College to be on cloud nine right now, though they have a one-point lead, 48-47. Carlisle missed from the corner. Jay Murphy the rebound, and here's Adam. There's Sparkler. One of the things you can think about doing if you're Virginia to you get far down is sitting on the ball for a while, just making some time to off that clock. Adams controlling. They're going to look for Garris. He's got Edelin and Robinson driving in. The basket will count. 
The basket will count by Dominic Presley, I believe. But it will be a charge. The basket is good, and the foul is on Presley. Nope. Well, it's got to be on Presley. Very it slow is. whistle right there. You know, an awful lot of demonstration, but there's the call. It's going to be charging on Presley. The basket counts. Second personal on Presley. Virginia against the press with Carlisle. Not especially quick, but he's strong. Goes to the hoop, and he's fouled by Garris, and that'll be Garris's first personal foul. Well, you find out what kind of club you're made of in regard to championship caliber. When you've got a guy like Samson on the bench, what can they do? And Holland has that problem. BC took a 15 to 10 lead after six minutes. The Cavaliers came back. Samson got hot with four quick baskets. Virginia moved it up to seven. The Boston College rally behind Garrison Murphy turned the game into a seesaw fair and presently it is Boston College by three. Carlisle, outstanding free throw shooter. Samson is not fouled out in a game this year. He has four personals on the bench with 15 points. And all the other things he does in that lineup. Remember in that first half in regard to the foul situation, BC went to the line 17 times, Virginia only nine. One point BC lead. Stone's really packed in there. Othell Wilson is all over Adams. Not giving Adams a chance to get the shot off. Virginia's back to man-to-man -man now. Danger defensive structure. Martin Clark on one wing. Now moves inside. And Jay Murphy with his patented outside shot. And Tommy Dersley is there for the follow-up. It is incredible how well the guards are rebounding for BC. Nobody blocking out. Dominic Presley, 6-3, but he can lead. Carlisle, who has eight points, now has ten, and they're going to need some perimeter shooting from him. Now he also has a problem of substituting. How deep is your bench? With Samson sitting down, even has to play a lot of minutes. Presley has five offensive rebounds in the game. Garris and the basket will not count. Three-second violation called against Boston College. on Clark there. Garris is in perfect position to score again. Virginia has not been able to deny the ball inside, and I think everybody remembers the BC teams under Tom Davis, the way they used to bounce that ball, even against the zone, getting it inside, and Gary Williams, of course, had so many years with Tom Davis, but he really plays a lot of that same style. A little bit quicker and getting the ball up, but basically it's Tom Davis' style. He's now at Stanford. 1-3-1 one, one trap now by BC. Just letting it take a look at it, and then they drop back to the 1-2-2 zone. Under 17 minutes. In the second half remaining, Boston College in front by one, 52-51. Ralph Sampson on the bench, has four personal fouls. Pesky Boston College defense inside, going up now is Edelin, and he draws the foul. Good second effort and hustle by Kenton Edelin, the junior from Alexandria, who, by the way, rooms with Ralph Sampson. I'm surprised, Dick, that both clubs are having a hard time blocking out off the board. They're, they're rebounding exceptionally well offensively but neither team blocking out too well Evelyn has seven rebounds in the game and that's three more than he averaged during the season he's on the line and he has not been a good free throw shooter by any stretch down to 33 percent from the line no this is not the part of the game that uh, he excels at and of course he's not called upon very often have to go to the line and the former interviewer player and the offensive rebound by craig robinson virginia can take the lead here their big, the big man is on the bench and leading the cheers from there. You see in this 1-2-2 zone, you've got Clark playing up top. To stop that perimeter shot, you've got the guards on the wing. Jimmy Miller from the corner, and it's deflected, taken down by Garris. Garris to Murphy. Murphy loves to penetrate here. And Martin Clark crashes the board, and Garris on the foul. And Garris has 20 points in the game. Everybody fouling very well. Again, another offensive rebound. Garris has already surpassed the season's average of 19 and a half. He has 20 in the ball game. And you go back to last year where Garris was 8.5 points per game score. A guy that had some problems making that adjustment after that year of transferring. But he certainly has played well this year. Second team all Big East. Bridgeport, Connecticut native. Gary Williams said, I need 20 points from Garris against Virginia. Well, he's got the 20 right now, and we have 15.35 to go, and he's got the 10 rebounds he wanted to. Virginia Carlisle from the corner. That's a tough shot against the 1 2 2 zone, shooting from the corner because it's pushing very bad rebounding position if you miss it. 5 of 8 for Rick Carlisle, the transfer from Maine, and it's 54 53. Virginia without Sampson. Sticking like glue to Boston College as Adams goes in with a bad shot. He loves to penetrate an inverted team where the guards penetrate and the big man goes. Good pass 
from Othell Wilson to Edelin. Now we got BC getting a little bit tired. Garris is asking to come out right now. We're going to see the substitute starting to come in. They're going to bring in three, and Virginia will counter with Stokes. Virginia hanging in at this point without Ralph Sampson. Othell Wilson could be a big factor for Virginia to keep him close. Look at Preston. They're not even guarding him out there, but he's penetrating right through. Carlisle not in good defensive position to stop him. Carlisle commits the foul, his second team foul, and for Rick Carlisle, that is his first personal foul of the game. It's been close. Ralph Sampson is on the bench with four personal fouls. That's the big story here. And Miller goes to the bench. We have a timeout. BC 56, Virginia 55. Five years ago, it was just an idea to create a new breed of copiers with the stamina to run and run and run that could anticipate the unexpected, adapt to changing conditions, and have the intelligence to constantly monitor itself. Introducing the Xerox 1075 and 1035, the first of the marathon copiers. From Xerox. Experience the 1983 Mazda GLC sedan. A luxurious front-wheel drive economy car with contoured bucket seats. Five-speed overdrive, versatile split fold-down rear seat, and almost unbelievable trunk space. GLC sedan. Its performance is unexpected, but its value is just what you've come to expect from Mazda. The more you look, the more you like the Mazda. A powerful new series. You're in trouble. You got to get yourself a lawyer. He left the dirt and corruption of the city to battle injustice on the Mississippi. Ralph Wade stars premiering Friday. Boston College leading Virginia by one point. From our camera atop, we look how to attack the D.C. zone by Virginia. Well, there's the 1-2-2 two, two zone we talked about. The guards are playing on the wing. You've got Clark up there on the top right at the foul line, so you've got some size up top and good rebounding position. But what's tough, if you're going to play out on the wings, when the ball goes down the corner, you're asking those guards to go all the way out there and cover. Now, you give up the corner shot, but that's not too bad because you've got great rebounding position, particularly with Murphy and Clark and Garris in there. You've got Clark being able to come right down the middle to go ahead and get on the board. Talked about how Virginia was so successful right, with their second shot. BC, with Presley with five offensive rebounds, has done it there. Now, now, Primus, number 30, is in the game. Burnett Adams, 44. And Kearns County, 24 off for BC. And it's Kelly. Can't get the foul. And there is heavy physical action inside and a Boston College foul. And Burnett Adams better watch out. He may be hit with a technical. He's being watched closely. And Gary Williams is beside himself. It is really amazing offensive rebound, though, by Boston College. You can't fault him. Watch everybody go over the ball. There's one offensive rebound. Ball doesn't go. Elon gets it right in the middle, and they just almost tear his head off. And I think Burnett Adams felt that he had all ball there. Third foul on Adams. 14 fouls against BC. Two against uh, Virginia. Stokes is in the backcourt, number 15, along with Othell Wilson, who has the ball now. And there's BC again, going to that 1-3-1, one, one, about three-quarter court trap, and then dropping back to the 1-2-2 zone. Out to Stokes. Stokes trying to penetrate, and he travels. Now, Boston College is still going with that crazy quilt substitution pattern right now. Well, I think with Samson out of the ball game, they can afford to do that much more, Dick, because they don't have to be worried about being caught with a small lineup. You had that small lineup in the game, you got Samson in there, and he could dominate for a couple of minutes. You saw the story with the offensive rebounds and the second shot. Michael Adams misses, and Edelin gets the rebound. And here they go to Othell Wilson, Carlisle in the middle, and the big strong guard goes up, and the basket will count, and the foul as well, and I think Carlisle was called for the charge after the basket. Good, good job by Adams getting all the way back, though, to draw that charge. Carlisle takes it inside, and we have an interesting situation here. And we find Carlisle coming right down. Adams going to get back and wait on him. There he is. Set up. Carlisle comes down on top, gets the basket, but does get the foul. Carlisle, second foul, third team foul. He's hit his last three and is six for nine, and that's what Virginia needs. Dick, right there for that man, Terry Holland. He's got some tough decisions to make. As long as his team stays in the game, he can afford to keep Ralph Sampson on the bench. I would say if his team got down five or six, he could feel a roll. Regardless of how much time's on the clock, he's got to put him back in the game. But if they can stay tight, I'm sure Terry'd like to hold him to about eight to seven minutes. No question. When North Carolina State had a big guard, Sidney Lowe, out of action, UNLV was leading. Had to bring him back early with four fouls. Of course, Sampson, much more prominent player being the center. He went out with Virginia leading by one, and BC 
He's trailing by one, so the score's been even with Sampson out. 13.44 remaining in the second period. Virginia's given up the jump shot, but what's been killing them is they can't do anything inside. Garrett, shot falls off, and the foul's on Adams. Number four on Burnett Adams, and the 15th foul on the Eagles. Everybody talked about what will Gary Williams do with it against Sampson. The Sampson's out of there, and his teammates are really carrying the load here. And Jay Murphy will come in for Burnett Adams, who goes out. So Murphy is in there with Primus number 30, Tally 24. The sixth and seventh men, Tim O'Shea number 15, is also in the ball game for Boston College with Garrett. And here again is that slight trap. Just trying to get a big turnover if they can, but more than likely getting back into that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Carlisle's been hot from outside. Othell Wilson, 10 points and 7 assists. Michael Adams, 8 points, 7 assists in their personal duel. Carlisle looking inside. Stokes left wide open. Maggie Stokes hits from the corner. Didn't look like he wanted to take that shot. A line drive by Stokes, and he hits it. There was no one within 15 feet of him. His brother, a former player at the University of Virginia, now in med school. Virginia is up by three points. That has to make Terry Holland happy. It's still Boston College ball. And here comes Michael Adams coming back in the game. The winner of this game will face North Carolina State. NC State shot 68% from the field and beating Utah in the first game, 75 to 56. That'll be Saturday afternoon after the Kentucky-Louisville game on CBS. Psychologically, D.C. might have got a big lift when Sampson went out of there. The Houston players say when they played against Virginia over in Japan, that when Sampson didn't show up to play, they lost a lot of their money. That's be happening in this game. Murphy, second shot foul. So, Edelin is hit for the personal foul. That'll be his third personal foul, and he now has to shoulder the burden inside. He has nine rebounds, and Garris will go to the line. Talk about Virginia. They beat some big ones this beat team. Georgetown, Houston, Louisville. Missouri, but they lost twice to North Carolina. Chaminade, of course, in Honolulu. And North Carolina State in the finals of the ACC tournament. And that's been their four losses. Boston College, with their record of 25 and 6, most victories in the history of the school. Two free throws by Murphy. Oh, he's a good sure shooter for a man his size. Has a great release on the shot. Seems very confident. Murphy has 10 points. Garrett's the leading scorer for BC with 20. Sampson with 15, Carlisle with 12, leads Virginia, and Craig Robinson goes to the hoop. Edelin gets another rebound, he's 10. He is really doing a job off the board. That's a long jumper. Russell Wilson hits the outside shot. Best outside range of the Virginia team, and BC knew it, and a four-point Cavalier lead. Virginia getting a great play out of Kenton Edelin, who normally doesn't play this many consecutive minutes. Nearly 12 minutes remaining. Boston College going to their bench. Both teams, actually. Stu Primus pulls up. And Murphy knocks the ball away, but it's off the Murphy. Virginia ball. No foul called right there at all. Good job by Robinson, who now is bent over, holding that. The telltale sign of being fatigued when a big man bends over and holds onto those pants. But Robinson has been the Iron Man in this ball game. As you saw, we've had a lot of seesaw going in this game with nine lead changes and six ties. We have... Under 12 minutes to go, second half. BC trailed by one at the half to Virginia. They have the ball. Well, Sampson's been standing up almost the whole time that he's been over on that bench. Stokes looking inside. He has Craig Robinson. No foul. Edelin follow up his foul. So Edelin with his second offensive rebound in the last minute and leading the cheers is the great Ralph Sampson, who's on the bench with four persons. The world's tallest cheerleader, huh? I guess. And Edelin goes to the line, and you know that the Virginia people were wishing that he'd go ahead and make that shot. They really don't need him on the line. Martin Clark, you saw come in for Terrence Pally. And on the line now is Kenan Edelin, who has really struggled, makes 30% of his free throws. He grew two inches from his freshman to his sophomore year and hit a bonus here, really, for Virginia. And the fans go crazy at the University of Virginia when he does make one. Seven of his 11 rebounds are off the offensive board in this game. I think one of the things we're seeing here in the second half is Stokes and Othell Wilson have been able to tempo this game a great deal by not in the press, with trying to go through the press, they're just walking it up the court. So Wilson has hit another outside shot, and Virginia taking advantage. They've matched their biggest lead of seven points right now, and all with 
Ralph Sampson on the bench. He went off with Virginia leading by one. They're up by seven with 11.05 remaining. And even though Virginia's playing man-to-man, -man, they're playing it like a zone because they're packed in so far. They're making the BC guards take the jump shot, which they're not putting up. Martin clock inside is fouled by Wilson. Let's, we'll check to see who the foul is. Good down, Wilson. So Edelin has done it inside, and a bunch of people, including Wilson and Carlisle, have been effective outside for Virginia. They're hitting that perimeter shot that they didn't against Washington State. Well, you can see that BC has got to start taking some of those outside jumpers. This is the story we talked about Virginia at the beginning of the game. But when a team's going to pack in like that, you've got to shoot it. You notice that a lot of Garrison shots have been off the rim. They just haven't gone, and Martin Clark is hit for the foul, and that will put Boston College over the limit. That's their seven. Dick, I think it's a good time for a BC timeout right here. They've lost some of their momentum. You can see the defense packed way back in. All five guys about 10 feet from the basket. It's time now for BC to get themselves reorganized. There's Clark inside. Wilson reaches in and commits the foul. Anytime you come down over the top of the ball, you're going to get that slap on the hand. Garris has missed his last three shots, and it seems that Virginia, after a, a short respite, came alive with Edelin really leading the way inside with fierce rebounds. Here's Craig Robinson on the line, shooting one and one. He has four points, but he has ten rebounds today. Gets all of that rim on that one. Craig Robinson has been a very solid player, takes the toughest man defensively in the front court. Solid rebounder, been the number two rebounder behind Sampson most of his career. Gary Williams, siding against the timeout, suggested, and Robinson hits the free throws. So it's 66 to 57 and the biggest lead of the game. Nine points for Virginia with 10.49 remaining. The Virginia goes to a little press right here, but it doesn't work in their favor because Adams can beat the press. And I think with Virginia lulling DC to sleep, that was a lot better than putting the pressure on him. You don't want to get this team running again. Big thing, we're hitting the perimeter shot. Garris has missed his last three, and they're going to hold that on Stokes away from the ball basket. Should be no basket he fouled him before he got up there. But these officials are taking so long to signify what the play is, you don't know what to call it. They are going to call the basket, I guess. Let's see. No, they're not. No, they're not. They call it on Stokes. The personal on Stokes, that's the sixth team foul for Stokes' second personal. So Boston College has the ball out. Carlisle. And that's Garris tipping it up. Garris fighting inside, coming out of the pack. Of Ozell Wilson is a three-on-one for Virginia. And going up with a shot right. It's Stokes the basket now. They need a timeout. Boston College needs one back. And they're going to get it now. Just the basket after you suggested it. 10-23 remaining. Virginia sky high. Without Ralph Sampson, the Cavaliers have opened up an 11-point lead. 10 points. This Sampson has been out. And we'll be back. Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. Allstate update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies. But the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an Allstate agent for life, home, and auto. You're in good hands with Allstate. There's new value in Ram Tough Dodge Trucks. Now only Dodge Truck makes this three-way offer. One, cash back when you buy them. Up to $750 on Ram Pickup, $1,000 on Ram Chargers. Two, prospector discounts up to $1,000 when you equip them. And three, 11.9% when you finance them. Dare to compare. Only Dodge makes this offer. Cash back, prospector discounts, and 11.9% financing. Boston College calling a timeout after a Virginia siege. 11 point lead, 10 23 to do this to go, and BC has a mission ahead of them, Billy. Well, Dick, what I think BC has got to do with that timeout is to say, hey, let's pick up the tempo in this ball game. They did very well in the first half, turning it into a game that might not have been pretty to watch and very difficult to announce, but it's the kind of ball game that got it going up and down the court, allowed them to spread it into a 90 foot game. What's happened here in the second half is Virginia's turned it into a half-court game, which is not B.C. style. Virginia's outscored B.C. 13 to 1. The Eagles have not had a field goal in over five minutes. And Michael Adams can't break the drought. And it's controlled. Huffling. And a foul call. It's against Virginia. His fourth. Edelin with his fourth. 
personal foul. Edelin with four, so the two centers on Virginia, Sampson and Edelin, both with four fouls. Well, I think what you see, Terry Holland, is go with Edelin as long as sure. you can. You know, sure. try to get another three minutes out of him before you have to come back with Sampson. He's had a chance to buy a lot of time, and it's worked to his advantage. It's like getting interest in the bank with what they're doing now. Now you have BC, an excellent free throw shooting team with 10 minutes to go on the line. And it's a lot of time to be in that one-on-one -one situation. Here's Martin Clark, misses the one-on-one. -one. That's unfortunate for them at this point. And he's one of their best free throw shooters. 11-point lead, and Othell Wilson, who this half has four points and six assists with the ball. DC may have to go man-to-man. -man. And the reason I say that, they're going to have to take Virginia out of this half-court tempo. They're back in a 2-3 zone, Virginia's using that clock. They're just taking the time. Sampson standing up. Everyone seated but Ralph. Ralph is like a coach on the bench right now for Virginia. He wants this game badly. I, Dick, I think it's time for BC to go man to man. And here they are. They're going man to man. It's, they've got to do it. Offensive foul against Ricky Stokes, and they'll shoot one and one. Not a good idea by Stokes, but it was an excellent move by Gary Williams. Go man to man. Pick up the tempo of the game. Player control foul right there. That's right. BC will inbound. There's Sampson. He has 15 points in the game. Picked up his fourth personal foul early in the second half. His backup, Edelin, goes out of the ball game. Now, what, what you've got is Jimmy Miller in the game. Against the man-to-man, -man, he'll be a much better scorer. But you'll lose an awful lot from a rebounding standpoint. Michael Adams working against Ricky Stokes. Both teams, of course, have been well over the limit. Foul. Shot deflected by Stokes. As he as he tried to go in, and stepping on the line or touching the line was Robinson, BC ball. I believe Robinson tripped over his own player, but he's got to be getting tired. He's been in this entire second half. I don't believe gentlemen. he was out more than a minute or so in the first half. Robinson has 12 rebounds, eight of them this half when Sampson's been on the bench. So it's been Edelin and Robinson inside with the muscle. Murphy can get that jump shot. There it is right there. He and did it. Follow up, he went no block down. short, and he went right after it. And it's now 68 to 59. BC with enough time with 9.13 to go trailing by nine. It's going to be an important couple of minutes here. Let's see if BC comes back and plays man to man. No, they're in a 1 3 1 half court trap. Now, here, if you're in Virginia, you've got to throw the ball on over the top of this trap. Wilson penetrating inside and then going into the corner again. And a whistle foul. Three seconds on Jimmy Miller. Virginia. A big, big turnover there. You've got a team playing a half-court trap, Dick. What you want to do is spread everybody out and make them run all over the court. Virginia's going to call a time. When will BC go full court press all the way? Well, they've been trying that. It hasn't hurt, helped them. Where they got to pick up the tempo is in the half court. When I'm playing ball, I don't care how much I sweat. It's part of the game. Oh, rap. But off the field, I want to feel nice and dry. And I want to smell nice. That's why I use Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant. Speed Stick's the wide stick. Gives me effective protection in just a few strokes. Helps fight wetness and odor all day. Get the wide stick for protection. Speed Stick Super Dry Antiperspirant by Menon. While most of the automotive world was still learning to understand the diesel, this Mercedes-Benz diesel was hitting 200 miles an hour. This Mercedes diesel was hitting 3,000 miles per gallon. And this Mercedes diesel was hitting 1 million miles after just 11 years. Today, the automotive world has learned at last to understand the diesel. Mercedes-Benz has mastered it. This weekend, one of the most unusual courses in the world sets the stage for the Tournament Players' Championship here on CBS Sports. Keep in mind, BC forced 20 turnovers a game this season. Yes, they're right, Dick. And you look at that right there. Virginia has 10. They got a lot of those in the first half. The second half, they've slowed down the tempo of the game and haven't had many turnovers. I think the reason for that last time out is Terry Holland recognized the defense and said, hey, there's no sense being in the lane at all. Spread out, make the 1-3-1 one, one trap chase you all over the floor. See if BC can make some progress here. They've got to come back down by nine with 8.38 remaining and in the lane. Block. Good block. Craig Robinson, and here comes two on one. Carlisle, Ocean Wilson, and... Great play by Clark. He really, this could be a four-point turnaround right here. Walk. 
No, they have to foul on Jimmy Miller. I haven't been right on the call yet tonight. You're perfect. The other way. I have not been right on the call tonight. Jimmy Miller commits the foul. That is his third personal foul. And going to the line to shoot one and one is Michael Adams. And, and here we have Jerry Holland down the other end saying what happened on the other end on the goaltend. Now, there's Miller coming over. Could have been a foot out. Pretty good call. I was wrong on that one. Off and wrong, never in doubt. That's why we like you here, right where you are. So Adams on the line, shooting one in a penalty. One and one, he has eight points. And we go back down to the other end. Dick, I said a four-point turnaround. You had Virginia with a chance for an easy layup. Tough play by Wilson. They didn't get it. Now you come down this end, and it can be a four-point swing. And BC, if Adams can convert this, will be down by seven points with 824 remaining. Sampson has been on the bench most of this half with four personal fouls. I think the full court pressure. I think we'll see Ralph Sampson uh, with seven minutes to go in this half. They go out to Stokes. Pressure on ball to 10. They get it across just in time. Carlisle. You realize there's Stokes in the game and Carlisle moved up to a forward. He had three guards in there. Three guards with Jimmy Miller and Craig Robinson. So they do not have a bona fide center in the ball game now. Both of their centers, Edelin and Sampson, on the bench with four personal fouls. Virginia has out-rebounded BC 15 to 12 this half. Edelin and Robinson have 13 of those rebounds. Wilson, top shot, top shot. Robinson gets the offensive rebound. There's another one for Virginia. Virginia, I'm surprised, is not pulling the ball back out. And Miller on the bank shot. Jimmy Miller has eight points, and so the offensive rebound by Robinson pays off, and it's a nine-point game again, 7.35 and running. That basket counts by Adams and a foul. Adams is taking the ball in. Now, what, what I'm sure Gary Williams wants is for Adams to bring the ball up the court quicker. He's bringing the ball up the court in a, in a three-quarter gate. You want a fellow to push the ball up the court as quickly as possible for a couple of reasons. Pick up the tempo of the game, and, you, and you've got seconds going off the clock while you're walking the ball up the floor. Jimmy Miller now has four personal fouls. Martin Clark goes to the bench, and in the ball game, Terrence Talley. Look for Sampson in another 33 seconds. Six. Garris, Stu Primus. Burnett Adams will come in the ball game now, along with Dominic Presley. So the wave of substitutions continue. Adams and Murphy go out. There's the rebounding story, Virginia with a slight edge, but Robinson and Edelin in the second half have shouldered the burden. Good pressure on Othell Wilson, he's given up the dribble, and a whistle, they call the foul on Adams, and that's his fifth, he's out of the game. Now that won't hurt at this point, because uh, Gary Williams has had a lot of time to rest his people. Othell Wilson uh, going to the line, good free throw shooter. Uh, I think the biggest ones he might have made this year, uh, he's made a lot of them in his career, but the biggest ones maybe against the Soviet Union would put that game into double overtime if Virginia beat the, the Soviet Union club. Burnett Adams fouls out. He did not score, had one rebound. A senior from Elizabeth, New Jersey, and this could be his last game. We said he was in postseason play with Boston College all four years at BC, and he is fouled out of the ball game, replaced in the lineup, in the lane, awful quick by Garris, by Jay Murphy, out of bounds. Virginia this, ball. It's going to be Murphy losing it. Let's see, he's down, and I think he's going to be all right. Dick, I saw him take a terrible uh, spill in the St. John's game in the Big East Championship with St. John's one, and it looked like his knee Ralph. was really hurt. Here well, comes Ralph Sampson with 7.27 to go, as you figured. So they're going with Sampson, and going out of the game is Craig Robinson. Now, if you're BC, you've got to tell Garris, go ahead and take some cracks at Sampson. Take it right inside on him. Virginia the ball. By the way, Craig Robinson on the bench. 13 rebounds. He averaged nearly six during the season. Two block shots. Tremendous job. Sampson won that ball inside. He's extremely active. He's got Murphy behind him and Dominic Presley fronting him. Odell Wilson is short. Sampson fights. Miller has the ball and now a fight. I see the arrows in favor of Virginia. Cavaliers ball. Arrow in favor of Virginia again. Good hustle on the inside. Miller didn't go down for that ball. Good hustle by Murphy. Terry Holland twice ACC coach of the year. 7.05 remaining. Sampson in there with four fouls. He came in with 7.27 remaining. Loose ball. And it's picked off. Yeah. Dominic Presley, and here is two ahead. Now you've got 
Virginia has to start thinking about occupying that clock. They got the four-point lead. 70 to 66, and BC making its push right now. 6:51 remaining in the second half. I'm kind of surprised Virginia not protecting the ball a little bit more. But Sampson is in there, and they haven't been able to get him the ball. Time out for here. Good timeout. 641 remaining. Virginia at one time up to 11 has seen their lead cut to four. And Sampson's in the game right now. And Terry Holland now faced with a situation with the Eagles coming back. I think I was very surprised that Virginia didn't spread it. Make sure they got nothing but a good shot and a good percentage pass. The, the last two times down the court, they have taken shots that really aren't there at this time of the ball game. What you want BC to do is you really have to chase you and work hard, and maybe then you can get the easy basket inside. But when you pack it back in like they have right there, particularly on that last play, Samson's down in the low post, you're really playing into BC's hand. As far as BC is concerned, as we go over to their bench, obviously they want to foul Ralph Samson out at any cost. You want to go to, to Garris on the inside. I think you want Michael Adams to bring the ball up the court much quicker, try to penetrate, go in the lane, really cause trouble for Virginia and the fact that they have packed the, the ball back inside. You're, you're not going to have any pressure on you, so get the ball up the court quickly. Has Adams been able to penetrate the way he wants with Opel Wilson, who's much stronger in front of him? Well, I think he's been able to get the penetration. I don't think that he has been able to go ahead and get the ball up the court as quickly as I expected. Now, he's on the bench right now. Well, they've got uh, Presley, who, is, who has done a tremendous job, particularly on the offensive board. He's got Five offensive rebounds. Virginia will inbound. 6.41 remaining. Team fouls, of course, both sides over the limit. There you have Garrett down there on Sampson. D.C. has been outscored. Has outscored Virginia 9-2 to two in this run. Tough getting the ball over a man almost seven foot tall. So Carlisle did a smart thing. He moved back. He should look the other way. A double-team Othell Wilson. Carlisle coming in, and Jimmy Miller driving from the other side. Sampson kicks it in for Virginia. And Ralph Sampson has his first point since he went to the bench. And there you have again what Sampson's presence is. When you're going to double-team, you're going to trap like that, he's going to be under all alone. Murphy gets the pass, and they're going to call goaltending. He credit the basket to Jay Murphy. Ball was right over the top of the rim. Ralph came across the lane with it. If he got any piece of this ball, which he must have, good pass inside, good position by Murphy. Here comes Sampson across. He got a piece of it when the ball was in the cylinder. And he's got 14 points. Jay Murphy in Boston College has picked up a foul. Terrence Talley commits the foul. His third. And as you're looking at the shooting percentages, see how Virginia, 56 to 35, after BC had had the edge in the first half. Well, I think the reason for BC's 35% shooting is they did not play their game up to this point in the second half. They're a, they're a team that likes that transition game. They like to move it up and down the court, and they have really been playing a half-court game. And Garris missed a few shots inside. They just were off the rim, but they were misses nonetheless early. And here you go with both coaches saying, hey, we're coming back with our best people. Robinson's back in the ball game. You've got Clark coming back. Adams is back. They're going to go with their fresh people. All right, so it's Garris. Adams, Murphy, Primus, and Michael Adams for Boston College. On the line is Othell Wilson. He's got Carlisle. Oh, he missed another one. Free throw in BC. Sampson is in there, and Robinson, as you said. Othell Wilson missed three big fouls against Washington State. It didn't come back to hurt him, but it certainly could hit. Big Stockton, Billy Packer. West Regional Semifinals. North Carolina State plays the winner of this game, and Primus has the ball taken out of his hands by Robinson, and they dive for the loose ball. He's got it. Let's kick it out of there. Boston College ball. What a hustle play that time by Garrett. Everybody went after that ball. You had 10 players with the ball on the ground. No one could pick it up. And the Eagles have it to exemplify the intense hustle in this game, we think. Well, that's the problem for Robinson there. He had the ball, but everybody ran away from him. You've got to come back and help your big man. 5.55 remaining second half. BC trailing Virginia, 72 to 68. Ralph Sampson went out with Virginia up by one, and they moved to an 11-point lead. He's in the game with four personal fouls. Not the only one with four. Primus looks like he wants to penetrate down that middle. He's done it very well so far in the ballgame. Will BC go to Garris now? It worked in the first half. Murphy trying to go to Garris, but a low pass, and Carlisle has it for the Cavaliers. I think Virginia should hold up a little bit here. 535. Hard play. Into Sampson. 
No hurry on the Cavaliers. If they've got the good shot, they should take it, but they don't have to force anything. Ricky Stokes in the lane with a drive. Big basket for Virginia. And you don't expect him to take that shot. If you're BC, all eyes are turned to Sampson when a man penetrates, so it's available. He's got eight points, Stokes. Three for three from the field. And his best specialty is defense. Block Sampson. Boston College ball is Martin Clark had like four or five feet and Sampson came up and blocked it away. And in that case, Sampson probably wasn't very wise to go out aggressively after that ball because he could get the touch ball. They go inside to Primus. You're right, he wants to penetrate, but he was under the hoop. And here's going to be, I don't know about that, Virginia Stokes running it up. He had to come back for the ball and that almost caused a problem. Now there what you have, you have BC sending five men to the board. When you do that, of course, you're wide open for the fast break. Now it's eight points, and we're getting down to that time that Virginia can really use the clock and spread it out. An eight-point lead for Virginia. They're trying to get to the regional finals. Game Murphy, another one. And here's a three-on-one. Hotel Wilson, all the way. And a three-point lead for Virginia. For BC. Another timeout right here. And Boston College has got its problems now, and Virginia seems to have the aura of a champion at this point. I once rolled a log off a 100-foot waterfall, came up standing, oh. and popped myself open a cold, light beer for milk. Ah, you lumberjack. Well, one time a big mouth bass pulled me up a waterfall. <laughs> That's when you appreciate light beer, because it's less filling. Yeah, but it was a thought of light's great taste that kept me going when I was cutting timber in the Great Sahara Forest. Wait a minute. Sahara's a desert. It is now. <laughs> Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. No, speaking of forest, remember that time? In spite of back-breaking interest rates, unemployment, and recession, we've done what the experts said couldn't be done. We built a new Chrysler Corporation. We built it on high mileage and front-wheel drive, on K cars and LeBarons. Convertibles, luxury cars, sports cars. We built it on quality. That's why we back every new car we build for five years or 50,000 miles. Before you put your money down, think. You can go with Chrysler or you can go with somebody else and take your chances. George Raveling said that Ralph Sampson blocked more shots in opposing players' minds than he has on the stat sheet. Well, that block right there changes a lot of things. When you see that he's still going to be aggressive, you've got to be thinking about that perimeter jumper. Now, Virginia has given BC the jump shot this entire second half. I mean, they've got everybody on the inside, even though they're playing man-to-man, -man, and BC hasn't put it up. BC cut the lead, which was 11 points to four twice the last time at 72 to 68. But Virginia has run off three straight baskets, two on the fast break. And there you see it there with 4.36 to go. Ralph Sampson spent most of this half on the bench with four fouls. And in his absence, Virginia opened the lead. Tally and Primus in the game. I think we're going to see both of those guys going to put that ball up quickly. There you go. Aaron Tally hit. There's two. And full court pressure. Now you've got Sampson down on the other end of the court. So the key thing here for BC is to make sure that the ball doesn't go over the top of the press. Can Virginia hold on against Boston College? Stokes gets it cross court to Robinson. And Carlisle takes it to the hoop. And that Carlisle, a big basket. He has 14 points. And you see Dick and Sampson was waving Carlisle on. Say, come on in here. If they try to block this shot, I'm going to be there to funnel it back in. BC needs points. Garrett has Sampson in front of him. He'll call a foul on Stokes. Good job by Stokes. Coming back in to help his big teammate, making sure that Garris doesn't get a chance to put the ball on the floor and wheel around Sampson. Four fouls on Ricky Stokes, who has been an offensive threat with 10 points and, of course, his natural quickness that they use coming off the bench. Garris will go to the line one and one. You know, Dick, uh, another one of the former teammates of these fellas, Jeff Lamp, I understand, been operated on. He had a, suffered a, a cheekbone uh, surgery he had to go through today. I understand he's in the hospital. But he was a great teammate uh, with these fellas. You know, and of course, all the great things that Ralph Sampson has done. Because he's not the all-time Virginia scorer, which Jeff Lamp is. And in a, a miss by Garris on the one-and-one. One. He has not scored in the last eight minutes. Isn't that amazing? He did it on Sampson. Sampson goes out of the game, and Virginia proves more than a one-man team. Less than four minutes to play. Now, here's the, here's the good 2-1-2 two -two move against that 1-3-1 one -one trap that uh, BC's trying to use. There's a lot of Sampson. Look at the second effort. He goes after it again. Left hand. And that doesn't go. He did everything but get the points there. 340 to go. At the other end, Tom Pally, Sampson. Oh, what a block. 
force there and a block, and will call the foul on Boston College, and that's what Ralph Sampson does to That was incredible right there, down the other end. He missed the shot, but hustled all the way back down court to come up with a great block. He's got, this kid's got a lot of heart. A lot of heart. He knew what he wanted. He's a man of purpose, stayed in Virginia for four years. He wants that national championship, and he could be one step closer to it. Look at him hustling. Now, he missed. He was down 90 feet away from this play. Goes up, blocks the shot there on the glass, which is legal. Comes back and then picks up the loose ball. Misses a foul shot on this end. Here's Adams in the full court game he likes. Down by 10. Adams misses the shot. They can't buy one. Karen Kelly goes up this time. No whistle. Out to Scoop Primus for BC. Throws the ball away. Virginia has the ball, and Boston College is frustrated, Billy, they really because are. the shots aren't dropping. Well, they've got Sampson down in there. They're trying to put a little bit extra. <laughs> there you see the frustration on the shot. Is he all right? He hit the back of his head. Who is that? I can't see. Terrence Talley, I believe. Talley? Terrence yep. Talley, the sophomore from the Bronx, New York, who grew up in the streets of New York and went to prep school in one of the more exclusive schools in New England. Here's Sampson going up. Doesn't commit the foul on, in the eyes of the referee. I thought he got a piece of it. And there's, oh, he comes down and hits him in the back of the head with his elbow. So Tally is going to go out of there. No foul. <laughs> he might have committed three on that one sequence. <laughs> and Dominic Presley comes in. That's the story. 80 to 70, Virginia by 10. 3.20 to go. Ralph Sampson has scored 17 points, 10 rebounds, and three block shots. And of course, he's done that without playing most of the second half when Virginia really raise their lead from 1 to 11. That's been the story here, the key in his hand. Here's where you want to make BC have to chase that ball, but Virginia keeps attacking. Foul before the shot, no basket, and the foul is on Stu Primus of Boston College, and Sampson will go to the line. There's a case where the leaper goes in the air, the man goes down underneath him. You've got to give him room to come down. Here's Ken Eden coming back in. Let's see who's going out. They're going to keep Ralph in there. Stokes was out. So now they're going with the big lineup of Edelin, Sampson, Robinson, Carlisle, and Othell Wilson. That'll put Carlisle back at the guard spot. They'll probably use Robinson to be the man handling the ball in the middle. 3.03 remaining in the second half. Robinson on the line has six points, but more important, 13 rebounds and two block shots. He handles, along with Edelin, most of the rebounding scores with Ralph Sampson on the bench with four fouls this half. This young man has got to get a lot of credit, too, in this respect. He's played a lot of minutes, Dick, and he hadn't had a chance to get that rest, and that's when your shooting touch leaves you a little bit on the foul line. Between the three of them, Sampson, Robinson, and Edelin, 34 rebounds for those three up for Virginia. And 82 to 70, the biggest lead of the ball game with under three minutes to play. That's not going to be there. Interception to Ralph and the alpha pass to Othell Wilson and Virginia. Rolling on way to a date with North Carolina State in a chance to win their ACC final defeat. Adam four to seven. Adams might as well penetrate. Just take it inside, get moving. It's still PC ball. And here was a case, uh, Dick, where a lot of people, we started this show talking about it's a team against Ralph Sampson. I think Virginia showed tonight that they are more than just a one-man squad. They've shown it before this year when Ralph has been out of there. Probably the biggest example was that win over Houston. And as we look at the Boston College bench, 25 and 7 if this game goes against them, and Gary Williams is down. He's done a marvelous job, and BC had one of his greatest years of all time. Three-way to the shot. They're going to call the timeout. They're going to stop this clock. There's still quite a bit of time left in this game. Because they have the ability with their pressure to force turnovers and get quick baskets. They certainly do. And here you have BC calling the timeout. How many do they have left? Three? They use, if they use three, we'll have to see him out second. But I think what you're going to see, they'll use all these timeouts to stop the clock. They've got to get the ball down the court quickly. They have Virginia, you don't want to commit any fouls. What you want to do is stay right back in that zone. I believe they're out of timeout. Oh, is that right? Was that their last? Their last timeout. We'll, cl we'll clarify it, but BC, we have no, no timeouts remaining, and Virginia has three. Well, and Dick, you've got a situation now. If you're BC, you almost have to go the route of fouling then. You have no timeouts left to stop the clock. You can't let Virginia occupy the ball. We've seen it work. North Carolina State won its first two games in this championship by virtue of the opposition missing foul down the stretch. The question is, who do you foul? You're not going to foul Carlisle, who's one of the better free throw shooters. 
They're good free throw shooters on this Virginia yes. team in the lineup. And, they, and they've got Othell Wilson, who surprisingly has missed a couple here in a row, one in front end for the one and one. That's not like him, but you've got Stokes, Carlisle, Robinson, Othell Wilson. You've got yourself four good free throw shooters, and Ralph at 70% is not exactly a slop. The only one is the problem is Edelin. He's not in there, but oh. they brought Robinson back in, and they brought Stokes back in the ballgame. Now, if you're BC, you've got to go for every steal, and don't worry if you make the foul. You've got to stop that clock best you can. Yeah, two and a half minutes. Scores and highlights coming up. NCAA semifinal action from the regionals. Brent Musburger in our New York studio will review the final day for you. Carlisle driving in, blocked inside by Garrett and put in by Ralph Sampson, who has now 19 points in the game. Leading score in the ball game is Garrett with 20, but he hasn't scored in over 10 minutes, I think. Not only giving the Virginia players a lot of credit, but also Terry Holland. There's a block by Sampson, but Robinson pushes from underneath. Give Terry Holland a lot of credit for having the confidence in his ball club to let Sampson uh, sit there with about 7.23 to go before he put him back in there. Of course, what helped his confidence was a one-point lead up to 11, which was then cut down, and he brought in Ralph at the right time, as you pointed out, seven minutes to go, and then Ralph went to work. Dominic Presley is on the line. Not a good shooter. Not a, he hasn't looked for the jump shot, but an excellent job off the board. This is a part of this young freshman game he's going to have to work on. For all of the rebounding by Edelin and Robinson in the outside perimeter shooting by Virginia, Boston College has not shot well this half, and that's played a major role in the fact that they've been out of this. this point. Not a bad foul there. You go for the steal, do the best you can, try to get that ball. Remus went in there, tried to get the lob pass, didn't get it, puts him on the line, but stops the clock. Boston College... The NCAA final 16, three years in a row. Last year, they lost to Houston in the regional finals in the Midwest, seven points away from a final four berth. Two years ago, they were beaten by St. Joe's in the regional semifinals in the Mid-East. Their seventh NCAA appearance, co-champs in the Big East, actually tri-champions with St. John's, Villanova, all finished in a tie. Terry Holland, as you pointed out, maybe a little bit of maligned as a head coach, undeserved it. Uh, he's a very cool customer over there right now. Under two minutes to play. Dominic Presley oh, goes over to the fine shot. Presley with the basket, 86-75. Still a lot of time in this game. One minute, 50 seconds. An 11-point lead, and the only thing BC can do without the timeouts is to foul, and that's what Adams did to Othell Wilson. There. And, of course, a team with a minute and 50 to go, a minute 48. There's a lot of time here if you commit those fouls and the team doesn't hit the front end to the one and one Gary Williams, in his first year as head coach, in fact, there's no other coach in the final 16 in his first year at a school at a, as a head coach. Gary Williams stands alone. Well, Bill Hodges in his first year at Indiana State, remember, took them all the way to the final game. Gary had his team at American U in the NIT in 81-82, and another miss Wilson. Wilson. front end. This is the front end. Boston College needs to score every time down. 86-75. In the corner and going in like a man possessed. Is Freeman, the shot is up and good by Harris. I think good by Sampson, and that counts. That's going to well, count. Sampson is fouled out of the game, so hold the phone. We have 1.36 to go. Sampson is fouled out. Garris has scored his first point in over 12 minutes of play. Now, see, there's a lot of time left. A minute and 36 to go. You keep fouling. If the team can't hit the front end of those one and ones, you get right back in the ball game. But, but BC ought to, Virginia ought to say, now we have where we want him. Sampson on the bench. Well, what? I don't know about that, Dick. No. I'm being a little facetious. I know you are. <laughs> and I think the key thing right here, if you're Virginia, you can't go ahead and start celebrating. We saw that in the Pepperdine ball game. You fellas had, what, a week ago Friday. 84% free throw shooter misses two one and one attempts. And UNLV had a chance to win it. And they missed free throws to help NC State to two wins there. Here's Garrett. By the way, Samson fouled out, 19 points, 11 rebounds, and four blocked shots. You have DC making those free throws, Virginia's not making them. First point for Garris in 11 minutes. He has 23 in the game. Good interception and a half to go. What do they call? It must be a two-shot call here then. Let's see. Nope, one and one. That was a tough break for Boston College because they had the interception. Dominic Presley with the foul. And Terry Holland wanting two shots called. But again, only four seconds off on the clock on that exchange. Terry Holland, cool and passive. Gary Williams, a little more excitable. Martin Clark, 
has come in the game for Terrence Talley. So Clark, very steady player, and a good outside shot is in there. Stokes. Pretty good man to put on the line right here. Ricky Stokes, as I pointed out, although he doesn't play it that many minutes, he's the third leading free throw shooter in number of attempts for UVA. Nearly a perfect game for him. Four for four from the field. Three for three from the line. 11 points and five assists for the sixth man for Virginia. Stokes hits the ball free throw. There's nothing DC can do if Virginia makes the one end. Ken Michael in number 30, of course, came in when Samson went out, and he has playing with four fouls. There's the ball rolled up the court, so the clock doesn't start until the man touches it. Ten-point lead. Murphy in front. Goes up and oh, and he may be out of the game for Virginia. And there's DC going right inside. Virginia getting very passive. And they bring in Terrence Talley quickly, very quick and aggressive. And if that fouls against Edelin, it is. That's his fifth personal, and he is fouled out. And Virginia cannot go ahead and use the clock because DC is trying to foul him immediately. He had 11 rebounds to Ken and Edelin, five points, but 11 rebounds, the key story for him. And with this shot right here, you can have BC down by only seven. With 127, and as you pointed out, not a lot of ticks to that clock have gone by. What they're doing, Dick, they're allowing about four seconds to elapse every on every Virginia opportunity to have the ball offensively, so they're going to have to make the one and one. And they're doing it without any timeouts remaining. Murphy, 18 points and 11 rebounds. And here Murphy picking up full court. Carlisle looking for help. He's in a hurry, and he gets it in just in time. And a foul is on Pally, and they're going to send Craig Robbins into the line. Two seconds off on the clock that time. We're going to have a long, long time before this minute and 26 is over. And the key to any game, any coach will tell you if you're behind, do anything you can to stop the clock. That's right. Down to seven points. Terrence Pally is fouled out of the ball game. He scored six points, had three rebounds, but is a sophomore. He'll be heard from at Boston College next year in the future. Definitely. Boston College, as we pointed out earlier, only loses one senior. Garrett, that's right. Although he's a great player, they're going to be a solid help next year. Greg Robinson, big free throw all of the line of time. Boy, when you see fellas take that type of delay on, on their motion, you think that they're really going to come up short. But good shot by Robinson. Ralph Sampson has been part dominating player, part cheerleader in this game tonight. A per minute played, he did extremely well. One out of two. So now Boston College can chip away and get one of them back. 89-81. 120 to go. Oh, by Adam. What he was trying to go was for the three-pointer. He thought he was being fouled from behind. And Miller gets the ball, and it's 89-83. 111 to go. And BC all over the court. They've got a foul with 107 to go. Boston College has the ball with 103. Steps out of bounds and Virginia wants a timeout. Now, I think what, what are they asking for the time if they want a technical foul? They're well, asking for the time. They want the timeout and they're going to get it. 57 seconds to go. 89 83 and Boston College relinquished a very big possession right there. I don't know why Ophel Wilson took that ball inside, Dick. Payne Weber. This marvelous painting is going once, going twice. So, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Payne Weber. In this highly competitive financial world, Payne Weber believes the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your investment. We're at the D Event Center in Ogden, Utah, in a tremendously frenzied finish here, Billy Packer. 89-83, Virginia had a 14-point lead and seemed to be riding their way to the finals. They're still in control, but Boston College, without timeout, have hit shot and foul and have crept back right now to within six. Well, Michael Adams threw that shot up, and uh, 
it went in, which was a real prayer, but what he thought is that, that he was going to be fouled by Robinson going over his back, and he was going to try to get a, at least a two-shot opportunity, which was a smart play. Almost got a three-shot out there, and what Virginia has got to do to realize right now, they've got enough points to win the game. They've got to take some time off the clock, and that's why I felt that Othell Wilson would have been wise to get the ball back outside as opposed to taking it to the hole. But BC is not giving him a chance to use any of that time because they're going to foul if they start to move the ball on spread. Well, what you can do, Dick, is the minute you touch it, throw it to the first three open man. That way, if they foul you without the ball, it'll probably be a two-shot foul. Second half has been a game of spurts. Virginia's outscored BC 13 to 1 in the middle. BC came back. What's going on with that? What he's upset about is where the ball is going to be taken out back. He felt it should be on the end line. And I think that he's right about that. Quite a gamble. And also Wilson goes up. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. He gets the rebound. He's big rebound. Take it back up. And take it out of his hands. Garris just stripped the ball away. And Boston College comes back. Adams penetrating his foul. His foul. And, they do. Can't believe and, he, and he almost had a chance for a basket. Why is Othell Wilson continuing to go up for the shot when all he has to do is throw it out and use the ball? Or dribble it back outside. I can't believe that he put the shot up there getting it blocked. There's no need for more points. They're now in a position where they're going to be up by four with 46 seconds to go if Adam hits the pair. Bizarre turn of events here with Boston College. Coming back after Virginia led by 14, and it could be a four-point game if Adams converts here. We have 46 seconds remaining. Oh, the little guy moves that ball around a lot in his hand, and here we go back again. And BC has done it all, and I have to say it again, without the benefit of timeout. That's right. Adams has 16 points and seven assists. No change in expression for Terry Holland. You're a pitch drop in this gym. He missed the free throw. Pressure all over. And a foul. Martin Block fouls Robinson one second off the clock. And Robinson goes to the line. He's been the fellow that's been able to drill some so far. Talking about the spurts, Virginia outscoring BC 13 to 1 in the middle of the half to go up by 11. And BC came back to a 9 to 2 to cut it to 4. Virginia rolled it up again, and then BC has come back. Now, here we have Dave Odom talking to Othell Wilson. I'm sure he's reminding him, hey, we don't need to do anything other than keep possession of the ball. Robinson shooting one for one, one and one. He's five for seven from the line tonight. But 14 rebounds is a great contribution. And he missed another one. Garrett comes down with it, and with 40 seconds to go, Boston College can cut it to three points. And Adams fires it up. It's a three-point game. And the pressure oh, from Adams yeah. from BC. Carlisle. It's not oh. a two-shot foul. That should be a two-shot foul. Is. It is. It is. Now, that was probably not a smart play by BC. They had a man with a ball in his hands try to go for the ball. They've been doing very well against people with the one and one Adams put that ball up awful quick, and that's what I was talking about earlier, Dick. When BC lost their momentum, Adams is the kind of guy that can generate that momentum, even if he takes a bad shot, come down and put it up. BC was doing so well on the offensive board. Here's Carlisle on the shot. And a good free throw shooter at 83%, Rick Carlisle. He's shooting two with 27 seconds to go. He's made all two from the line tonight. Now, they ought to be, the, the officials ought to stop the BC players from putting their hands up in the air and then dropping them down. They're disconcerting the shooter and getting away with it. You saw Ralph Sampson, he fouled out with 19 points. Carlisle coolly hits the free throw. 27 seconds to go, five-point lead. Got to get two in a hurry, and Wilson blocks the shot. And now, going to the line will be Murphy to shoot as he's hit to the end. And one of the things you definitely don't want to do if you're Virginia is foul. You let the man put the shot up. You don't want to commit fouls and stop the clock. How do you interpret the way Virginia has played this last two minutes? Well, I think that we've had a game of, of ebb and flow here both ways. I was very surprised at BC allowing the game to become a half-court game. Now I'm very surprised at Virginia with the mental mistake of not occupying the clock by trying to go inside when they can really throw it out and use up some time. 
you know, you figure 20 seconds on the clock, that's nearly two possessions where you move right. the ball, Dick, and don't try to force another shot off. Jimmy Miller fouls out. He scored eight points in the game. He is the third player on Virginia to foul out of the ball game, and replacing him will be Tim Mullen. There's Ralph Sampson, who scored 19 points and fouled out earlier. Now, if you're BC, you'd like to be able to pick the man to foul, but you always don't have that ability because of the short amount of time. If you can get it down to three points, you can be very easy as to who you put on that foul line. Now, Mullen and Carlisle are brilliant free throw shooters. I are to two. Murphy hits them both. It's a three-point game right now. Virginia will inbound. And a good idea to go ahead and substitute because you can't just set up on your press. With the arm wingspan, and as a foul, a foul on two Primus. It's going to be on Primus. They're going to call the intentional two-shot foul. Put Carlisle on the line for two more, but no time went off the clock. Now, he was holding Carlisle. Was trying to break for the back. And again, Gary Williams substitutes back, brings Murphy back into the game. Drew Primus, I believe, is fouled out of the game. He has Primus is fouled out. Another play you'll be seeing in the future in Boston College. The sophomore fouls out. Murphy, Clark, Garris, Adams, and Dominic Presley. The same five who started the game for Boston College in there now. Carlisle hits the free throw his third straight. Carlisle, the transfer from Maine, having some big, big shots to make here. The elder statesman on the club, steadying influence on this Virginia team. Hit. Two more now. That's a good job by Stokes to force the ball to be thrown up quickly, but it goes to Preston. 88, Dominic Carr drives in, and they're going to call that on such a charge on Boston College, on Dominic Presley. Good play that time. A real smart move by Robinson. Don't try to make any foul. Just stand in the line. Let Presley come down there and go in the air. So Virginia with a chance to continue to make the free throws and keep Boston College at bay. A valiant comeback by BC without the benefit of timeout, taking advantage of some missed free throws and some perhaps questionable offensive strategy, and the Eagles never quit. I'm surprised that their bench is down because I feel they're still in this ball game. You know, the, the kids are, are, are down. Of course, you don't want to lose a ball game, but the way they've been going away from Virginia's been shooting is still in the ball game. Greg Robinson on the line. This is the free throw, and here's Michael Adams. You just want to occupy him now. Don't foul him. They need the basket to come within three, and Murphy gets it. Here's 93 to score. And Wilson gets it inbound to Carlisle. And Murphy fouls Carlisle. That'll be one and one. Well, you've got that in two seconds right now. All he has to do is to go ahead and hit one of these, and this ball game is over. This is quite a game, a very strange game, Dick. Very strange game, and it was strange from the outset with all of the helter-skelter substitution by both teams early, and Ralph Sampson, who picked up a lot of fouls, has not fouled out at all this year, fouled out in this game, but the big story, I have to say, in the second half was the way Virginia played with Ralph Sampson on the bench with four fouls, and that is where they really took the big lead to weather the comeback by BC. They did, and they did it by playing a half-court tempo game, and it's very surprising BC could never force tempo to get them out of it. Carlisle, six for six at the free throw line. And Virginia... Well, head to the finals, and finally a smile on Terry Holland's face. The finals of the West Regional against North Carolina State. Keep in mind, that's the rematch as Virginia lost to NC State in the ACC championship game. And the final pass inside, Garrett gets the final points at the bundle. The final score, Virginia 95, and Boston College 92, and the Cavaliers keep it going. despite Ralph Sampson, and there is Gary Williams, who is exhausted. His team played valiantly, seemingly out of it, down by 14, came back. But ironically, when we talk about how BC would play Ralph Sampson, when Sampson was on the bench, BC had a problem with the likes of Kennedy Edelin and Craig Robinson, who shouldered the rebounding edge, and Virginia, Beating Boston College 95 to 92. Brent Musburger will have scores and highlights, and we'll be back with an interview as well.
an exciting game here in Ogden, Virginia 95, BC 92. We've got a lot more coming up, so stay with us. Champions of American sports. And in June, HBO brings you complete midweek tournament coverage of Wimbledon 83. From today's brightest stars to yesterday's greatest heroes, HBO Sports brings the champions.